Hello. Hey, here we are with the girl. Yes. You've been asking for nobody has, has been asking for this. Nobody has been asking for us to make a bear episode, but we're doing it anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, by unpopular demand, the girl. And why have we selected this for today? Well, it's because I'm giving myself the day off with this one. We can go even harder with next week's episode, which I have been doing nothing but reading about for three days. And next week we said is Zemichi, right? Yeah, the Zemichi, but and to prepare for the Zemichi, that's law of research because that's that's not just two books, that's twenty books for the Zemichi. Fucking twenty? Why? Yeah, yeah, because when you create an idea as smart as a Zemichi, you realize that you can't just make one think about that. No, you gotta keep going with it. So the Zemichi pretty much stole the plot of Vampire away from the seven Camarilla clans, and then they became the main villain, so to speak. That's well, they what happened are with the Zemichi. Pretty dastardly. I mean, the yeah. Dracula. Dracula was a what was what was he? Anti tribute. No, no, he was just a straight Zemichi. There is no Zemichi anti-tribute. Okay. <laughs> See how much I and know. So, in preparation for the Zemichi episode, we've selected something easy, which is the girl. Yes. Uh, Big, adorable, you... cuddly bear people. Now, for a book that's 134 pages long, there surprisingly is not that much to the girl. This is a very easy book to look at, to read, to understand what the girl are supposed to be. And that is, there are a bunch of big babies. Every single one of them is a little baby that's the size of a 16-foot giant. Yes, they are quite literally but, double the size of a werewolf in Krynos form. Speaking of much, I'm going to paste some pictures of what they look like. I'm sending these into Discord as we speak. They look very friendly. Except that one. That this, one looks kind of scary. The, the scans came in a little dark with this one. Yeah, they did. Well, yeah. look, at the, look at this large lad. So he wouldn't hurt a fly. You see the one that's got the little um, coat on? Yeah. The now, top one? Yeah, what I would like to point out with the girl, if we can compare sizes, they have forms similar to the Hamid, Labro, Krynos, Hispo, and Lupus, but it's all bear terms. So their, their version of the Glabro form is as tall as a werewolf Krynos form, and their Kronos form, which is the Kronos form in, in their terms, is 16 to 10 feet tall. Assume that's the guy with the axe? Uh, yeah, that's the guy with the axe, but at the same time, that's the guy with the vest on. Which leads me to ask, how big is that gun on his back? Uh, it's probably like a fucking, it's probably a bear at 50. Well, no, that's, uh, that's higher than that. That's going to be like an anti-tank rifle. Or something Probably. that he ripped off of a bipod in World War II. Yeah, it's like a Browning M2. Gotta get big with your guns. It's gotta be like some like 78 millimeter or something. Yep. Uh, though I don't think he's ever going to use that gun because the girl typically fight with paws or just not at all. And we get to go into the big damn story of the girl. Yes. Now, you remember that this doesn't go well. No, it really does not. <laughs> As we know, these guys get their asses handed to them in the War of Rage. Yes. So what were the girls supposed to be before that? That's the question. I don't know. Now, with what I've told you about the girls so far, what do you think they're supposed to be? From what you have told me and what my research is, they are the caretakers of Gaia. They maintain the land. They heal the sick and the wounded. They are medics. They are magicians. They are artists. Their, their whole shtick is that they're supposed to be the nannies and the gardeners of the planet, where if you've got some misbehaving humans, they get them on the right path, you've got a force that needs to be planted, they're like Johnny Appleseed, they're going around with their little uh, stove pot hat that's filled with apple seeds, and they're going around planting a forest. Um, are they doing that today? Yes, they're trying, but the girl have kind of sort of given up they they're still going to do their job because that's what mama gaia commanded them to do but they've come to the conclusion that they're not going to save the world they're not going to be able to once the ones that can do that even though there is a portion of this book that says oh the girl are going to make a comeback no they're not no they're not 
<laughs> that, that, that's not gonna much happen. as it pains me to say them because we could really and, use and their help. And Clyde Tall Puck is gonna come out the um, he's gonna come out the umbra. <laughs> you won't know until you try. <laughs> all right, we begin. So first of all, just how ridiculous this book starts. I'm looking at page twenty one of the breed book. And it's got the first greeting segment where the framing device is that you're talking to Rendon Chithclaw, who is talking to a newly changed girl. And he says, oh, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to do this ritual of the first greeting where I was supposed to uh, give you this greeting, but I, I didn't write it down. And I was supposed to have a gift to prepare for you, but I didn't have the spirit. And I was supposed to have a fish and berry dinner for you, but but I don't have it. And, and so I'm just going to start the book. Hmm. <laughs> That's kind of funny. The most horribly underprepared narrator we've ever had in these books. Hey, he didn't know what day it was. He was having, he was taking a nap. He says, back then we had Gaia in space. Uh, to the girl, Gaia just made herself. She just came into existence on her own one day. And she just walked through space until she decided that she was going to sit in the Milky Way solar system. Um, our little solar system, and she's going to position herself between Venus and Mars, and then just turn herself into a planet. Took her hair, turned it into rivers, she took her fingers, turned them into trees and grass, she curled up her body, it turned into Earth. And then, boom, the planet's made. There you go. It's out in space now. And while she was in space, I don't know why she would do this, given the other creation myths that we read, but she... She, according to the girl, made the wild, the weaver, and the worm. Where they call them the yarn spinner, um, the pattern breaker, and they have something funny that they call the weaver. I'm f uh, the tapestry maker. This is weird. You figure that the, the, you know, the, well, yeah, what was the first one you called it? Sorry. The butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. Yeah. The yarn spinner is what they call the you, wild. You figured the yarn spinner would be the fucking, would be the weaver, but... L like a liar, that. that's why I yeah. from. Because whenever you're told, oh, you're spinning a yarn, it's that you're bullshitting me. It's that you're just making something up on the fly. <laughs> yeah, really. It, it, you know, like um, like what Werewolf did, uh, Werewolf Den did with their Stargazers video. Yes. Yeah, yeah, we're being mean today. <laughs> John's been in a vitriolic <laughs> mood lately. Uh, you you said you said to me earlier today that I'm more spiteful than Jeffrey Katzenberg. Now the thing about that is that you might be right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thought he's this was good a call right out now. post, and I was going to be on the receiving end of it. He, he's eating good right now. He's uh, he's winning. He's seen Disney kick its own ass, and DreamWorks is just doing well. well that's because Disney is under the too big to fail mentality, which inevitably ends in failure. Yeah, and Jeffrey Katzenberg will get the last laugh after all. Yep. And then, while Gaia was around, she said, you know what, it was a really stupid idea for me to make the worm. That was just a really bad idea for me to do. I mean, why did I make the worm? It's gone out of control, it's causing a mess. And the weaver, as they describe it in this book, has a crying fit where the weaver just says, Oh, well, the worm's breaking all my toys. And then in the process of crying, her tears splash onto the worm that turn into webs and then get the worm stuck. That's the dumbest <laughs> origin story I ever heard. And a girl didn't, and, didn't remember shit. And the worm had a temper tantrum after the weaver cried on it and then split into the tragic worm. <laughs> Okay, girl. Very cool. You're already contradicting what you told me later in the book, girl. I expected more from you. Well, this is a very unprepared narrator, so... That's true, but... He's already not following the Ursine code. After realizing that it was a really bad idea to make the worm, because now we've got three different worms... Gaia realizes I need to make a changing breed to stop this. I mean, that's the only logical conclusion. I mean, I can't do anything about it. I gotta get an animal to do it for me. And so she makes the Macole, and the Macole are the memory of Gaia, and she says, why did I think this would help me fight the worm? And she makes the Korax, and then she says, 
Why did I make the Korax? These aren't really warriors either. I mean, they go around, they tell people stuff. Okay, this isn't going to work. According to the girl, she made the Bastet next. That kind of contradicts some other information in the other read books, but you know, whatever. We'll take you at face value, girl. The Bastet were made, and yeah, they were cool, but they were very prickly. They didn't like talking to people. And then the Rokia were made, and the Rokia were just in the ocean the entire time. I mean, come on, Gaia, what are you doing? You gotta make an animal that's going to interact with people if you're going to save the world, if you're going to save humanity from the worm. So, finally, she's gone through her big toy box of animals, and she grabs the bear and says, You. You will be the one to save the world. She gives him the changing seed, and behold, we now have the girl. Yes. Wonderful, right? Big, cuddly bear people. Yeah, the big, cuddly bear people. And she says, you will be the teachers to the humans. You will go around and you will tell them that the worm is bad. And that they should stay away from the worm. And that they should follow me instead. And I am the Luddite. I am the one that wants to be worshipped. All of humanity needs to do what I say when I say it. And you're going to tell all the humans for me. And she, and she just sends the girl on their way. And she sits back and says, yep, there's no way this is going to go wrong. I am a genius. This bear plan is definitely going to work. There's nothing wrong with what I'm doing. She said, plan B for bear and what it went wrong. Well, what happened is that, um, as it turns out, the worm isn't very nice. And apparently the, the girl just thought that this was going to be an easy enough job where you can just walk up to the worm and... And tell it, can you stop being mean? And the worm would say, oh, I'm sorry. And then just stop being evil. Just stop being itself. So instead, the girl just run over to Gaia and say something along the lines of, I'm getting in my That was not expecting that. <laughs> that really is what they do like all the girl in their little diapers with their pacifiers just run over to Gaia and say mommy the worm's too mean we can't do it help us mommy and Gaia says okay don't worry I'm gonna get the wolf to do your job for you it's like a bulldozer mom she just gets someone else to do the job for her kid that sounds about <laughs> right <laughs> And then the Garu were made. <laughs> and we have our glorious cord places. And what did the Garu, what did the Garu do, Kyle? Uh, one of them was killed by a snake, as we found out, but we didn't think it was a snake. So we said, hey, girl, you guys are good at healing things. Can you fix this wolf? And they're like, nah, I don't think we can do that. Like, what the hell do you well, mean? You you have things that we've we've seen you do it. What do you mean you can't? We can figure this out today. No, we don't they, want to share this. This is a really important gift to us. I don't think we could just give it away. Well, fine. Fuck you. And then they decided to kill them all. Yeah, they they, they would do that, but we're going to have ourselves. Heard you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. Instead of teaching the humans, the Red Talons and Silver Fang decide it would just be better to kill them. And the girl looking saying, what? No, mommy didn't tell you to do that. Um, the Garu are killing all the humans, and the guy says, "I know, and I'm okay with it." <laughs> Jesus. And realizing that the Garu could be a problem, the 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 Garal do a smart thing and say, instead of teaching the humans who are now all dead, we're going to teach the Garu to be nice. So they go over to the Garu and teach them the rite of purification, the rite of passage, how to make a fetish, how to use mother's touch, how to use sense worm, how to bargain with a spirit to get gifts, and all the fun bells and whistles that you get to use in World of the Apocalypse. The Garu taught the Garu how to do that. Yes, thank you. So this, and as you point out, this would eventually prove to be a ma massive mistake. Yep. And... The girl are sure that, yep, now that we've told the Garu to be nice, they're they're definitely going to be nice. They're not going to kill us all. Um, all's good and all's fair, and they're still going around killing humans. And, wait, hold on a minute, you just killed my colleague Kinfolk. He wasn't supposed to die. And so they go over and ask Mommy for a little gift that lets them raise the dead. And Gaia says, okay, here you go. It's the new gift that you and only you will get. The gift of Gaia's breath. 
where they will do this little gift where very similar to Pet Cemetery, they will get someone who's recently deceased and we'll say we'll we'll give a we'll give a small time frame. We'll say three days. You have three days to revive this guy. So the body's on the ground for three days. You gotta get to it before the spirit leaves. And the girl will do some hocus pocus, breathe the life of Gaia into it, and will then push the spirit back into the body. And then behold, he's back he's he's alive again. He's alive. Good. And sometimes the body is there, but the spirit isn't. So if you perform it anyway, a Gaian spirit fills it, and behold, you have what is the person brought back to life, but they're also a different person because they have a Gaian spirit in the brain. And it's a way to make Gaian kinfolk, I imagine. It's um well it's an easy way to make a zombie, but it's not a zombie because it's the gift of the Gaian breath. It, it's definitely not necromancy, believe us. Yes. It, it's it's the exact same thing the Cappadocians are doing over in the Mediterranean. But it's not because uh, it's Gaia who gave it to us, so therefore it's not necromancy. Yeah, it's not based off of weird sciencey shit. It's based off you, nature you wanna, herself. You, you want to go off of uh, dialectics and semantics. It's it's the same damn power, but you know it's fine when you do it. Yeah, it's for the forces of good. You want to shit on my Cappadocians that I like? Oh, absolutely. They're fugly looking. Yeah. And then the worm sees the girl doing that and says, I got an idea. I'm going to plant a bane inside this body that's going to kick the spirit out and chase it away. So when the girl revive it, they're actually making a fomori, and the fomori doesn't reveal itself until the right moment, and then it kills the girl. Smart, right? Yes, brilliant. The worm, the worm is very smart. He's a high-functioning psychopath. And then you regret... And then, hello, Ryan... And then, and you then Ryan comes in the that, call. Wait, no, the girl no sense worm. Yeah, the girl no sense worm, so they're able to tell this is happening. But every now and then you'll get the worm being smart, where you'll have the spirit of the deceased and the bane fighting for control over the body to see who's going to get revived in the body. And then it's a coin toss. And if you don't actually go through with the exorcism and get rid of it, well, then you have the Fumori, or you have like a weird abomination of the two. And you see how this can become very messy if, I don't know, some idiot werewolves get a hold of the gift and don't go through all the steps. Yes. Uh, hello, Ryan. We're currently talking about necromancy. Hey. Sorry about that. It's all good, uh, you, you had uh, stuff to do. You're busy uh, flushing the guy down the toilet that Grim uh, brutally murdered earlier today. No, yeah, no, anybody... no. Grim's, not, yep. Grim's not that technical. Yep. Yes. To be fair, if Grim murdered someone, he wouldn't bury the body. He'd yes. hang it up where it could be seen for everyone. I'll, I'll put this. Seen I'll put this on my Christmas else. tree. Yep. <laughs> I mean, he was he was half tempted to. Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but the fight with uh, Vigo and the rats and all that. Yes. He was half tempted to hang bodies up uh, outside <laughs> the uh, what was it the strip club? The, the, no. Yeah, they had the, they had the North Pole. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and, that would have been kind of and, rough. Uh, the, the, next step in this, the next step in this story is that all the Ger the girl get together and say, uh, if the Garu ask us nicely, we're not going to show them the gift. If they try to interrogate us, we're not going to show them the gift. The werewolves will not get their hands on this gift because the werewolves are dumb and we're smart and we know all the things and they know nothing. Uh, me, me smart, they stupid. And uh, then the Ice Age happened, and uh, that's pretty much just it. it. It happened. And then the ice melted, and then mammals were everywhere. And then the War of Rage happened. Yes. As the Surfangs said, show us how to use the gift. The, the girl said no. And they said, well, if you're not going to teach us, then we're just going to force it out of you, resulting in uh, the Macaulay stepping into their aid and all this other stuff. Where, like they go off, uh, This book goes off the term of events where it says the War of Rage was started by the girl and Macaulay. And then the War of Rage happens, and all the girl die. Uh, the end. Yes. Except they're the not dead. They're still there. G. As it turns out, there were multiple, many, many, many girl tribes. There are now only four left in existence. And three of them are... Three of them don't really count because they were in the Pure Lands, which had no War of Rage while this was going on. Meaning that 
out of however many tribes of girl there were in Europe, Asia, uh, Africa, there is now only one that's left. Great, right? Yep. Fantastic. Yeah, it's it, this will be like like alternate turn of events. If I had to tell you where a reverse war of rage happened, where the Garu died, and only one European or Asian or Middle Eastern tribe could live, who would you choose? If it was just one group of Garou. Yes. Yes. Honestly, I feel like the Shadow Lords were because they'd be sneaky enough to get away with it. And then, of course, we know Ryan's choice. Ah, uh, yes. Whatever that thought that you just had in your mind, that was the obvious choice. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> and on. who runs to the girl's aid? Well, it's the Corax. Who says, hey, uh, we, we, we have a little idea as to how do you can survive being genocided. Uh, what if you uh, went to sleep? And the girl said, that's a great idea. So they all got their little nappies and their little blankies. And they put themselves up in their little cradles. And then they just went to sleep. The massive little um, ritual that put their bodies in a like a stasis. like It's kind of like a weaver gift when you when you think about it. Where their body's in stasis, it doesn't age. And their soul leaves their body and goes into the Umbra, where they sit around where they're resting in the Umbra until they decide it's time to wake up. And that's how it works. That's fucking brilliant. Easy enough, right? But at the same time, you're no longer doing your job of planting trees and teaching people. There's also a little funny story in this section talking about... um. Silver Hair and the Bears, where it's a parody of Goldilocks, where Goldilocks is a Silver Fang. That's kind of hysterical. Where uh, Silver Hair, in this case, uh, comes into your house and says, This gift is too weak. This gift is too different. This gift isn't right either. I'm just going to go to sleep on the floor. And then the three bears come back and see that the Silver Fang has made a mess. The Silver Fang runs away and then comes back with all of their friends and then kills the girl. That's a very fucked version of Goldilocks. Well, it's uh, it's very Grim Brothers accurate. Yes. And uh, and really, that's where the history ends. I mean, that that's pretty much where they are right now. I mean, this whole um, this whole picture I just posted in the history pages. That that's pretty much just a girl today. You're all in the umber with like your little diapies and your little passies, and you're just sitting there with your with your mommy guy up saying like, "Mommy, when do I get to wake up? Mommy, when do I get to have my gifts? Mommy, mommy, mommy!" And that's what you are. This is what this is what this changing breed is. This is this is this is you. This is what you are. <laughs> yep. but, which is really sad. I ho I had a lot of hope for the for the for the girl. Now, occasionally, you had a story of a girl that I don't know it up and did something because in this book uh the fiana for whatever reason don't have it in either of their tribe books but the girl talk about it well the girl back when ireland was fighting for its independence against the uh, against the british um british kingdoms a girl woke up and he was known as the bear king i mean that that that's his name it's just the bear king and he was the guy who decided i am going to help the Fianna defend their homeland and we're going to take it back from the British and then he died and all of his girl army died with him. That fucking sucks. I mean, at least he and tried. That, yeah, at least he tried, but you know, he didn't, you didn't try hard enough. You might be asking me, why did the girl get their asses beat in just about, uh, I don't know, every fight they go into? It's because they don't form packs. This is true to nature where the bears will, are very solitary animals. Oh, yeah, that just walk around, yeah, they just walk around by themselves and don't talk to each other, don't hang around each other. They'll just come over to each other for sex, and that's it. That's it. That that's this is the reason why it's because the bears, even though they like talking about you know being babies and being babied and babying other people, they don't know shit about friendship and teamwork, which means they lose just about every fight they've gotten into throughout history. And nowadays, you just have the occasional girl that will come out of the Umbra and go back into his body and decide now is the time to stop hibernating. And and that's yeah, I'm looking at this, but yeah, that's it, really. That's it. We're done. Damn, we're that done. history's done. Fucking sucks. I was yeah, I told a lot you more for, a, for the girl. 
For a book that's 134 pages, very little of it is actual substantial history. <laughs> Most of it is very mechanic in nature. Yeah. Uh, so I'm done. <laughs> yes. Excellent. I, honestly, that, right. that kind of sucks because, like, I was hoping that, like, you know, bringing the girl back would be some great fucking revelation. It's like, here's somebody who has been asleep since the time of miracles, before the time of miracles, when, you know, gods roamed the earth and shit. And what are they doing? They're fucking napping. Like, God damn it. That this this is you. This what is you sucks with even more rebels. is that they when we get into it, they have really fucking cool gifts, and they have a lot of them. Yeah, it's uh, it's entire change you breathe where the Aesop is about wasted potential. And how about you stop asking your bulldozer mom to solve all of her problems for you, and you nut up and you solve your own damn problems yourself. That's that's the moral of the story. If I find a girl, I'm gonna fucking, fucking wake him up and I'll drag him out, get him wasted, and we'll teach him how to fight. Grim's got the right idea. Yeah, I I I wouldn't learn how to fight from a piano though. I had my no. fucking cook. <laughs> now you could absolutely teach him how to drink though. <laughs> All right, that's fair. I teach him how to drink. You teach him how to fight. Don't do it. You get. Oh, we got to talk about moots with the girl. Where everyone called him a fest, or it's too girl. Uh, two girl, and um, and that's it. And you also have a regalia, which is five girl, and then you have oh, uh, what's next? A power, which is a whopping ten girl. Uh, yeah, there's not that many of these guys walking around. Yeah, sounds like somebody needs to wake the fuck up. The only time they actually do anything substantial is when they have the Council of Autumn, where the four tribes that are still alive. We'll meet up and talk about business and decide how how what are we going to do what are we what are we going to say we're going to do to save the world and then not actually do anything to uh, to solve the um and the world's problems. And there's also one mention here where they they summoned the aspect of Bear the Totem to try to fight the Eater of Souls uh, during the Croton uh, crisis, and then Bear got his ass beat and thrown into the Deep Umbra. <laughs> Well, fuck, I mean... Uh, <laughs> a society of... N a history of nothing but losses. <laughs> yeah, girl taking more L's than anybody. And I thought the right. Jabba were bad. It's true, and I didn't even hear most of the history. There it is. That's, you talk to the guy Ferris, he knows what's strong. Yeah. <laughs> Which is which is a damn shame. I mean, just fucking look at the goddamn look at the fucking Krynus form they got. It's fucking scary looking. Dude, the big damn bear. But no, uh, which well, one's the Krynus form? The the really uh, big one with a large feet that looks like it's got yeah, boots on. Yeah, like the the sixteen oh, okay. foot bear. It, it's very hard Jesus. to see the head. You got you got to zoom in on that. Yeah, it's, it's sixteen feet tall. Imagine how big that axe is. <laughs> fucking monster. It's roughly, roughly the same size. Holy fuck. <laughs> Gotta find a big damn stone. Uh, this four foot large stone. And then smash it until it forms an axe blade. And then we stick it on a pole. And then behold, there we go. I could, I could take it. <laughs> you, 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 prob <laughs> you, you probably could as he's gonna like bust out crying and start sucking his thumb after you punch him one time it's like prince john in the in the disney robin hood movie no. <laughs> uh, well i get my notes together about the tribes could we go through the girl litany yes so the girl much like a lot of the changeling or the pharaoh breeds have their own litany which in this book is known as the code of ursa uh, the Code of Ursa is known to all Garal and forms the basis of uh, Garal society. As the book reads, it has been handed down since the earliest times when Shawana, first mother, and uh, Galoye, seeks after death, sang its first stanzas. And there is uh, an, an accompanying poem, but I am not in a poetic mood, therefore I will not read it. So, there are a number of different core tenets to the Garal litany, and it is fucking long. There is cherish the cubs, protect the land, heal the sick, nurture the needy, teach the supplicant, breed wisely, cleanse the tainted, guard the secrets, the rights of the elder, remember your history, punish the guilty, avenge wrongful slang, and that shalot 
So from the top, we have Cherish the Cubs. That's a pretty self-explanatory one. It's uh, a kid to little babies. Yes. Bears in nature tend, are one of the mammals that uh, have very few, but have, you know, very well, uh, very well protected young. I mean, they, there's a whole like mama bear um, the whole archetype. for a reason. Yes. Uh, so give them, so basically give them food. They take their roles as parents and mentors very, very seriously. Provide for new cubs, food, spiritual guidance, training, and then make sure that the younglings can handle themselves. Uh, you need to prepare young girl for the future as thoroughly as you absolutely can in order to protect the girl as a race. Aside from protecting cubs, another self-explanatory one, protect the land, defend, protect, and provide. Although the book claims that they had already failed this once before, long, long ago, just after the War of Rage, when the Korak said, hey, bro, just take, take a nap. And they went, okay, and then decided not to wake up. Although the book says that, you know, they hope Guy has forgiven them for the cowardice, probably not. And <laughs> now that they are back, or at least the one that is narrating this book, they want to atone for the long absence. They will not shrink from their responsibility again. Okay, buddy. Uh, heal the sick. I, I, I beg to differ. When we talk about the tribes, I beg to differ. <laughs> yes. Heal the sick. Uh, healing is one of the, is the second most important part of being a girl, aside from protecting the land. Uh, you need to try to heal even the most hopelessly corrupted, and even the Garo who have tried to kill you in the past. But you, do, you only use Gaia's breath on another Garal. Do not use it on on Kimfolk. Do not use it on Garo. Do not use it on any other Farah breed. Because, in all honesty, they're not even sure if it works on anybody else. Uh, that They didn't do the whole psycho conditioning where they, they whisper into your ear every night. Now, in the event you die, do not immediately run for the light at the end of the tunnel. Just stay still. Stay still. Eventually, we'll get to you to breathe life back into you. Yes. <clears throat> but yes, so for healing, you need to heal somebody all the way, 100%, and you cannot heal with any animosity in you. And, you know, it says in the book that the girl are stubborn people, and many are not good at forgiveness, but you need to heal people. That is your job. Uh, nurture the needy. So, uh, in times of great need, the bears have given their flesh to young humans in order to help people, or just giving their flesh in order to help people, whether it is clothing or meat. And then once they had sacrificed themselves to help others, the other girl would bring them back with Gaia's breath. Uh, it also uh, applies to nurturing spirits as well. Many humans uh, approach the girl desperately seeking, you know, faith healing or spiritual guidance. And the girl will teach them to listen to the, to the words of Mother Gaia. Uh, mostly it is not in the nature of a girl to turn a hungry soul away. They will never turn a hungry soul away. Next, teach the supplicant. So <clears throat> each girl in their life will receive a mentor of a uh, mentor of some kind. And, you know, that mentor, typically it's an elder that travels with a younger girl to teach them everything they know teach them gifts, teach them their history, teach them what little history there is, teach them everything they know about the girl, and the young will learn the lessons of Gaia and their place in her creation. The uh, bond between a, um, between a mentor and a, and a student is very close and will never sever even with time or distance. Um, they believe as one of Gaia's firstborn, they have a duty to pre protect their younger siblings, that is, other pharaoh breeds. And for a time, they used to be more open to sharing other gifts, but refusal to obey the Teach the Supplicant law might have actually just caused the War of Rage outright. Um, mm -hmm. So for the time being, they've kept a lot of their wisdom to other Gural. But they need, and the event that they give one of their gifts to the to the other fair breeds they need to make incredibly sure that whichever fair breed they give their gifts to they can handle them maturely they only ever really share what is necessary to the corax because of course the corax talk to everybody and they only give their gifts to those who demonstrate extreme responsibility uh next breeding wisely girl do not 
produce met do not produce Midas or Metis. Um, however, they also have very few kinfolk because of how few the girl are in number in general. There is and also a neat thing that the girl do. They have a ritual that will allow them to find a suitable mate, um, which we'll get to when we get to rights. And basically what that does, it, it allows them to just, com- it, it gives them a, a laser lock of who their mate is going to be, opens their eyes to new possibilities, and look for, and look for love unblind, and look for love uh, unblinded. However, there are some uh, girl that have chosen to ignore the strictures of the litany, uh, but they don't produce metis. Instead, uh, girl who mate with other girl just pr- are just childless. They cannot reproduce with each other um because they're solitary protectors they you know oversee a huge reach of land they don't really have a time to depend on a pack to fall back on they have to take care of themselves <laughs> yep as we said <laughs> uh i believe we have audio of um girl meeting um here it is oh god don't. oh yeah like you don't know <laughs> You're gonna have sex. <laughs> 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 oh boy. <laughs> that really is what they're like to say, no, I don't wanna I don't wanna <laughs> <clears throat> Okay. Cleanse the tainted. <clears throat> as those meant to protect guys creation, they need to keep the world as pure as they possibly can. They need to wash away any worm-tainted spirits as clean as they absolutely can, either through just talking the spirit out of the body, good luck, or just straight-up cleansing right, far more effective that way. Um, because they understand that not everybody infected with a bane has allowed the bane into their body willingly, and they have learned a ritual that allows victims to overcome the spirit that is plaguing them. It, it, it Here's a little interesting note. Exactly. Uh, in it, in cases where illness or insanity can be cured, we do so willingly. If the Silver Fang leaders of the Garrow would come and ask our help, for example, we would cure them and be done with jealousy. They have a way to rid the Silver Fangs of their afflictions. Their multiple afflictions. Well, oh, we know what happens when that happens. Uh, fuck all, I imagine. Oh, the fiery crown. Yes, that's true. And not not the way we're writing them in three point five either, as in causes the apocalypse, angels of fire, fiery crown. Yeah, so, don't do it. Keep the keep the girl and the silver fangs very far away just, from each other. Or the just girl. let them die. Just let them die. That's the best thing you can do for them. Yes. <laughs> let it go. Okay. <laughs> Uh, guard the secrets. Uh, again, a self-explanatory one. They used to teach all who came to them for guidance. As we said during the history, the Garrow, um, the Garrow would come to the girl to learn a number of gifts from them. And the War of Rage is exactly why the stricture exists in general. They guard their se- they guard their secrets in order to keep them from causing trouble. Although, kind of odd that the secret themselves caused the trouble in the first place. But the idea is to keep the secrets safe until they are absolutely sure that they need them. So, very important to, to, to keep that in mind. Uh, next, rights of the elder. So, uh, a lot of people don't respect their elders, but the girl all take respect to the elders very, very seriously. They cherish the knowledge of their elders. They speak with the voice of decades, sometimes even a century or more of experience. And the elders further still count many spirits among their allies. <clears throat> the only issue with that is a lot of the eldest of the of the uh, Garal remain locked in their sleep, and very few have survived since the War of Rage. Elders of this nature are always given some of the best food, the best accommodations, always have the right to speak first at moots, uh, or the Garal equivalent thereof. All of their songs, their poems, their art are always featured. Uh, always highly featured when it comes to uh, girl meetings. And if an elder chooses a youngling, any other claimant has to step aside and allow the elder that youngling so that the youngling may learn all that the elder knows. The knowledge of an elder to the girl is absolutely irreplaceable. As the old African proverb says, 
when uh, when an elder dies, a library burns down. <clears throat> Following that, <laughs> remembering your history. Uh, as the book claims, I actually quite like this. Whoever said, quote, those who do not remember history are doomed to repeat it, end quote, must have been a werebear. So while they understand that it is the Macaulay that serves as Gaia's memory, they still feel it is incredibly important to remember who they are and where they came from. Um, being alone and asleep for so long leaves one very reflective and introspective with a deep, alongside their very deep respect for tradition. Uh, the idea of this uh, stature is to examine the history of the girl as a whole. Uh, most elders that are still alive just remember the War of Rage and not, not all that much else because it was their major event. However, it is important to recall the experiences from all of your brethren, not just the elders. Uh, you learn from the lessons of history in order to make faster judgments of things that you might have never encountered before because you knew of somebody else who was in that situation. But it is important to take care not to get so wound up in history that you are blind to what is going on around you, a la the stargazers. Okay, uh, next, punish the guilty. It is rare that this ever happens, but many are unable to step away from the strict observation of this rule. Funny that's in the book. But you need to be absolutely certain of your actions before committing. It, of course, it is your job as girl to punish those who harm Guy's creation, however terrible they are at it. But you need to personally decide how serious the offensive the offense is and think of a retribution. Basically, it, it's an idea of don't get mad, get even, is what this of what this says. If somebody's going to uh, if somebody's going to fucking build a factory on wetlands and kill the environment, don't just fucking kill him. You need to, like, wait until he starts surveying the site, paying people off, getting the permits, and then just and then tie him up in a legal battle in order to cost him a whole fuckload of money for no. all the shady business. And then no. kill him. No! Graham, get behind me on this one. What? Get behind <laughs> me on this one. You're talking to a Milner Stunder and a DS Ultimate. That's not what you do. No. You're, uh, I, I uh, quite no, like to try and in uh, the bog a little bit better. I, I think that's uh, a no, bit no. clearer of a message. Put that message up on history pages right now. That, that big, like, bullying message I put up there. The, the, you don't want to wait for the guy who's building in the wetlands to get the staff together. You want to kill on the minute you figure out the plan. That's yeah. the only proof you're not a baby, is that you gotta go and stone up and shoot the guy who works for Pentex. Yeah, I don't know. I I like drowning him in the bog. I think that's poetic justice. You gotta you gotta pull a Lenny, a Lenny <laughs> of mice and men. I don't think I, I don't know. I didn't read of mice and men. Oh, uh, well, we, we know you're we know you're a big fan of Grips of Wrath, Kyle. Yes. <laughs> well then, those who un those who know and know, I'll, I'll tell you about it later. <laughs> we can now we can now post to Mister Incredible. Uh, those who know, <clears throat> does he know? Okay, uh, <laughs> moving on from punishing the guilty, we have avenge wrongful slaying. Uh, this is the girl's eye for an eye. Um, sometimes just or uh, so. Like, rather than educating people, sometimes it isn't enough to just teach them the right way to do things. Um, they follow this a bit more rigidly than the Garrow, but sometimes they need to let their rage do the talking. Rare, but it happens. The use this uh, slay this this rule used to be about um, you know killing females of childbearing age, which affects the which affects the girl population. Uh, but nowadays, it's mostly just used against, you know, game hunters and thrill seekers. Uh, but you need to respond to each situation based on the severity and the specifics of it. Either You can either just choose to kill them outright, or you can send them a message. Uh, there's some neat examples of this in the book. Um, where is it? So, I'm going to read it. Uh, or actually, yeah, here. No one says your rage has to be expended in killing anyone if that's not your style. Tear the Rolls Royce into Jackson Thimbles. Look at the message. I once heard the tale of uh, Jessamy Juniper Eater, a girl who lived during the time of Westward Expansion. The legend tells about her exploits against the idiots who rode moving trains through the plains and shot buffalo as they moved along. Several of those shooters 
later awoke to find their rifles twisted into interesting shapes and the bloody print of a large bear paw left on the bedroom wall. Only a few ever dared to kill Buffalo again. Those that dared only did so before Jessamy found them. Neat little note there. So there's more to the, there's, uh, there's little notes of Garrow that or no of Garal that actually you know get shit. Uh, now there now there we go. That's an exception right there. There you go. You see that that's a bear that's got the right idea. If only all of his other babies uh, could follow his example. Every now and then you get a girl that knows how to get shit done. And so, then he dies, but... Yeah, but at least they try. At least some of them try. They're, see, you, yes, they do have very stargazer tendencies of just giving up and going to bed. But occasionally, unlike the stargazers, you get a couple that sack the fuck up and do something. They might die. They might die horribly. But at least they fucking try. And that's more that we could say about than the stargazers, you know? So... Uh, on the this... stargazers more than um, more than the Noisha at times. Yes, that's, that's 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 another changing breed that not one person in the world has anything nice to say about them. Yeah, they they <laughs> just like playing jokes on people. So, uh, it's theorized that Avenge wrongful slaying might have been added after the War of Rage. Um, although some of the more conservative girl claim that Rage is a curse of the worm and shouldn't be used. It does corrupt, and it prevents the girl from fulfilling their original purpose as the caregivers of Gaia, but Gaia wouldn't have made them protectors without giving them some sort of edge in battle. So the idea is to use it in a morally responsible manner. Well, I'm going to be honest, uh, fuck that. Morally responsible, right? Well, you can't take the high road when you're fighting the worm. The worm isn't fighting fair. The worm just wants you to die. <clears throat> You gotta go underhanded. This I is mean, a martyr of life and death. You've got the uh, the Shadow Lords. By the way, that, that research I did in the Zemichi, um figured out something about the Shadow Lords that I would love to get into, but you know I can't say anything right now. This, they are on the right track by making packs with the Camarilla. That's just a smart idea to do. You have the Afiana, who are working with the ch uh, the changeling, including the unseelie courts to help fight against the worm. You've got oh. the children of Gaia uh, canceling the worm, and it works. <laughs> yeah, it just, seems to have. All you gotta do is cancel the worm. It's, just, it's simple. As you gotta that cancel the, yeah, the, just... the worm is racist, sexist, and transphobic, and the worm sucks. You cancel culture, get on it. Yep. And they. And there you go. The apocalypse has been prevented by the children of Gaia. <laughs> yeah. You know what? It, it, if it works, it works. I'm not going to complain. And, and even though it's going to result in a lot of people dying, the Glasswalkers and the Actina have plans that will stop the apocalypse from happening. It's going to result in a ton of collateral damage. And perhaps the Weaver or the monster they summoned from outer space could do way more damage than the worm, but hey, it's not the apocalypse. You stop the prophecy from happening. And, you know, you're not going to do that if you constantly go at this from a we go high, they go low kind of mentality. That's how China's dynasties fell apart in the time of Confucius. Because nobody was listening to a damn thing Confucius had to say and China fell apart regardless of how smart he was. Yes. You could be the smartest man on the planet, but you can't just keep talking. You have to go out and you have to do something. Yes. I mean, you watched Wizards. You watched the Ralph Bakshi Wizards, and that was the moral of that movie. It's that you, you can be a nice guy, you can be a pacifist, but when push comes to shove against an enemy that refuses to listen to you in, in silver conversation, you have to nut up and you have to fight it. And that's when Avatar casted gun. Easy enough, right? <clears throat> I, can, I forget. Right. The, I forget what he said to. Uh, I forget what he said to his brother before he shot him in the chest. He said, "I'm glad you changed your name, you son, you of, son a bitch. of a bitch." <laughs> Which uh, you know, he's insulting his own mom when he says that. But you know, she gave birth to Black Wolf. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> God bless you, Avatar. <laughs> Hell yeah! Should have so, been only. Should have been only child. <laughs> yes. Uh, do you want me to go into girl art at all, or do you want me to skip that? Yeah, they get to do like the little pretty pictures and stuff, you know, fighting. You're just going to go into your little classrooms and finger paint. Yes, they they see the... So, girl have a bit of tradition about creating art. 
They believe that Gaia's creation should exist in a balance, and they need to care for themselves and everyone else. Art and rituals are an expression of their care uh, to Mother Gaia. So, they believe that beauty and creativity are essential parts of the lives of Garal. They like to take the raw materials of Gaia and make something as an emulation of her, of her majesty. Uh, they create ideas of preservation. They enjoy making things. They find both a joy and a shame in dancing. They're outlets for positive energy. And there's the you know dance of the centuries. They preserve the lore. They teach the young ones about their history. And it takes a lot of time. And art, like everything, takes a lot of time, patience, and observation. I mean, there's very stylized practices and strict behaviors that all the girl must adhere to. And there's rituals surrounding everything. There's even, like, ritual challenges where, you know, girl would have to, you know, use the correct posture, have the correct amount of aggression, and have a very formalized method of challenges. Now, violence in of itself becomes its own ritual within that. It's not just, you know, who draws first blood, but, you know, who's the most insulting, who's the most impressive... It's it's very ritualistic how they go about proving the about you know proving themselves better. It, they see it as a more constructive use of violence. They like to immerse themselves in this expression for crea- of creative spirits, and they believe it helps nurture and care for the healthy spirit of the girl. So yes, art is very important to the girl. Yeah, or um, I think I would like to um, I would prefer the the naga art instead. Yeah, the where, Naga um, art's pretty nice. Uh, you soak your you soak your body in in ink and then crawl across the canvas with it. It is. <laughs> I I did think that was pretty sick. And, uh, you know, it sounds like um, Ryan, what's your impression of the girl so far? Uh, cowards, weak. <laughs> <laughs> I love her, get her in. I never thought I'd say that, but for once, you and I fucking agree. You see, he tells it like it is. That's why we have him around. Yes. One of us must be worm-tainted if we agree on something. <laughs> oh, I checked my batches, mate. I'm all right. I'm, all, I'm yeah. cursed, but I'm not tainted. You can check. Uh, Ryan, before we go into relationships, we have four tribes to talk about. Four and... tribes? Four tribes, and there's not four. really that much to talk about, in all honesty. I mean, the McCall, the Bonars, no, no. and the Stargazers. <laughs> yeah, the Stargazers, and, and you get all of them together, and then you have the girl. They just copy what the Geru are doing because they realize that the Geru were right all along. Yes. We oh, we're talking about clans for uh, the girl. The girl. The girl. Okay, yeah. I got you. Yeah, the girl. All right. We have the Forest Walkers. They have no original glyphs. It's that first little picture I sent you with the bear with a little vest. Uh, this is the North American black bear, is what they, they are. Um, as for their history, uh, really all they did is that they just hung around the Pure Lands. Uh, namely the Pacific Northwest and the Eastern Woodlands of North, uh, North America. Uh, with a little bit here and there in Central America and Mexico. And pretty much just walked around and told stories all day. They love being teachers. They're your, your little teacher, your little um, special teacher. Uh, don't raise your hands. Don't clap too loud. You're going to scare the other children. Uh, they're like little kindergarten teachers walking around. And pretty much all they did was just explore America and then just tell stories. And they were deeply involved in Native American culture, specifically like Cherokee. They shared a lot of territory with the, with the Croton. And... Yeah, that's it in terms of history. You see how fast we're going to go through this? Yes. Mm. And then colonization happened, and they got scattered, and now there's black bears all over America. And they want, uh, there's plenty of them still out there, just, they're just all asleep. Um, as for their culture and kinfolk, uh, like I said, they love telling stories. They love it so much it affects them mechanically. They have a treble strength and weakness, where... You have a free dot in performance, but the forest walkers, once they start telling a story, won't stop telling it until they finish the story. And if they see as an opportunity to learn a new story, 
I'll drop everything and just listen to the story. These guys will sit and let the villain monologue and prepare his evil next attack. And they'll just listen to all of it because they think it'll be an awesome story if they survive to tell this tale. Where, um, congratulations, you just let that Zemichi enter Zulo war form when you could have prevented that any, at any time because that takes two turns to finish. Yeah, t- Lo- for, for, for folks that taught us all the gifts we know, they're not very smart, are they? Oh, uh, next up, the Ice Stalkers, the Polar Bears. Where these guys actually do have a little bit of history. They hung around the Wendigo. And I'm pretty sure they were there before the Wendigo got to the Pure Lands. And they were these trappers. They went around, they trapped animals with ice magic, very similar to what the Wendigo will use. And they're said to be these master tacticians that lay out all these different traps. They're not smart enough to solve their melting glacier problem, where now they're pouring into Nunavut in the Yukon. But to the Wendigo's dismay, and now it's just, there's this refugee crisis in the Pure Lands, where the Wendigo will say, can you please get these bears out of our land? Or, you know, donate, uh, give all of your money to the Nunavut Nation so we can pay to feed all these bear refugees that we got because of warmish climate change. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> there's, there's a few of them in Russia, and... And once again, that that's it. That that's all there is to tell with the ice stalkers. There is so much text in here, but all of this stuff is fucking fluff. Ugh. Yeah, it looks like uh, that though. Yeah, there's a there's a paragraph in here specifically about how they did not get involved with fighting the storm eater. <laughs> Good lord. And uh, their strength and weakness, artistic ability. They are very good with crafts. They like building stuff. But they have an insatiable curiosity where they feel the need to wander around and explore and will just wander and wander and wander and stick their nose into places where it shouldn't be. There is a note here saying that they do have the occasional human kinfolk, but because of the Wendigo, they typically only ever mate with other polar bears. So they're going to eventually have a a population bomb like the Red Talons did because there's not that many polar bears to mate with in the Arctic, so eventually we're going to stop seeing our stalkers. Yes. Either going to run out of, we're either going to run out the changing breed girl version, or we're just and we're just going to have the plain old polar bear, or we're going to run out of polar bears and then we lose both of them. Which is a damn shame because polar bears are adorable if deadly. Yeah, yeah getting, getting slapped with one is like getting hit in the chest with a twenty-five pound sledgehammer. Yep, they're they're pretty fucking big. And if you see one, that means that bear has been following you for a while. It knows where you live. You'll never sleep again. <laughs> Probably. Wait, wait. You were, did you ever see that rush, uh, that video of the, the Russians in their window feeding the polar bear cookies? I did see that, yes. He was having a good time. <laughs> you just have all these little videos in Russia about all these different bears where you have like the guy sticking his thumb in the bear's cheeks, making the bear smile. Yep. He's tame. He's tame. Look at him. <laughs> yeah, he's having a good time. He's just sitting there. He's chilling with his friend, eating cookies. That's that's girl all Kim focus. What that is? That that pretty much is the 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 girl interaction with humans. If if not <laughs> if if not predator wife friend shaped. There we go. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It looks like this. Yep. And, and there you go, and then you feed him the Look cookies, and then he comes back a day later and starts telling you to plant a forest. Yep. See? Look. <laughs> That's girl <laughs> Kim folk in this video. <laughs> <laughs> and I know how to play one in your game. Yeah. Right. Next up, the Mountain Guardian, the Grizzly Bear, where these guys hung out in Canada, and... Then eventually you started moving south, moving south, everything's good. We like to hang out around the Appalachian Mountains. We like to hang it up in high places. It makes us feel tall. We're the biggest bear in the world. Everything's cool. And then colonization happens. They, instead of, I don't know, trying to fight the colonizers, they gave an order to withdraw all their forces and all their kinfolk. Uh, you want to talk about putting you in the game? Uh, Coach isn't going to do that because you were in the game and then you ran from the enemy. 
Yeah, like, what the fuck? You're <laughs> supposed to be the defender of Guy, and you fucked off. Why? In the process of trying to escape, some of their kinfolk got caught with the approaching uh, colonists, and then got forced to walk the Trail of Tears, and ended up in the Rocky Mountains, and now they're kind of split, where they're trying to get back to each other, but they can't decide... Do we want to live in Canada, or do we want to live in the Appalachians, or do we want to live in the Rockies? We can't really decide where we want to live. So there is a little funny detail that there's a massive Hispanic population of um, what are these guys called again? Mountain Guardians? Yeah. Uh, I, I guess that means they're looking over, finding all the Hispanic single moms and coming in and being the father, being the stepdad. I guess, yeah. <laughs> very, yeah very, very similar to the Black Furies. If you see uh, a fat, very hairy Hispanic man, more than likely that's a Mountain Guardian. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> As for what they do, uh, this is the most numerous Hamid um, bear, and they go around and just watch stuff. Your job is to watch stuff that happens and bear witness to all the stuff and then record it uh, with your with your bear brain. And their strength and weakness... They're the physical, physically the strongest of all the girl. They have a minus one to all difficulty involving strength, but they're challenge bound. Like the uh, Fenris, if you dare them or if you challenge them, they have to take you up on it. They just feel compelled to do that. So they're not very and, wise, but very strong. And last is the River Keepers, where I feel like we're phoning this in with this tribe. Because, well, guess what they do? It's in their name. They they look after rivers. They keep the river clean. They make sure the river Ganges is healthy. They make sure you can drink it. They make sure you can wash your clothes in it. They make sure the community is able to be healthy. And they live off in the woods by themselves. And they'll occasionally come in and hang out for a day. And it's Crazy Dave. Lives in a cabin by himself in the woods. Don't ask me where that cabin is. I don't know. He knows where we live. He'll come in and he's he's cool. He kind of freaks us out. He's a little weird, but, you know, he helps. And they have a big culture around gift giving, the River Keepers. They like presents. They like giving presents and they like getting presents, either experiences or material gifts. So if you want to put Santa Claus in your game, he's a girl. It actually would be kind of funny <laughs> a Santa Claus girl. But here's the issue where I think they're kind of phoning it in with the River Keepers is that they say, Every bear that isn't a black, polar, or grizzly bear is a river keeper. Where dog, we have the sun bear, the sloth bear, the bespectacled bear, and the panda bear. And we're just going to rub them all into one tribe? Uh, yeah, it seems kind of... Why not? It's because, well, like, why can't we have like a Chinese panda girl... Where their whole shtick is, I suck at everything because I evolved to only eat bamboo and I don't want to have sex and I don't want to eat and I don't want to save my species. And I just want to get fat and die. And then that's the, that's the try. Jesus. That'd be, that'd be kind of <laughs> cruel, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah, it's the world of darkness, but come on. Well, it's the panda's fault for not having sex. <laughs> uh, uh, do, do we need to play the Homer Simpson clip again? No. <laughs> <laughs> they, they bring it up in the book is that the girl don't like it. They don't like having sex. Some of them are sex repulsed. And wherever they do it, it's like a chore. The children of Gaia, as promiscuous as they were with the Apis, know better than to ask the girl for it because the girl know they're not going to do it because the girl are virgins for life. Well, no, it just takes too much effort. This is the virgin changing breed. Yeah, as sad as it is, which is weird, because, like I said, their gifts are fucking awesome. And their strength with the River Keepers is their affinity for water. Behold, you get a plus one to checks involving swimming. Awesome, great. Um, you also have a weakness for fish as your, as your weakness. So yes, like I Clan Toreador, when it comes to beauty, you are distracted when you see a fucking fish with the River Keepers. Imagine... Uh, you, you're playing this bear and you come across this guy, this vampire, and he's talking up a big game and you gotta destroy him and the bastard pulls out a fish and you're just like, ooh, fish. 
Yeah, you're you're going to fight the Tremere in Tokyo, and then he pulls out a delicious uh, sashimi dinner. And instead of killing him, you sit at the dinner table, and you're too busy eating, so he walks up right behind you and dr- sucks your blood dry. Hmm. And that's I can, it. <laughs> I can see why there's only four clans now. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all too stupid to live. Yeah, they're not very good, are they? No, they're, they're talented <laughs> healers, did I get me wrong, but Christ, you suck at pretty much everything, eh? Fuck. Yeah, uh, he's... You see why they need the Makolai in Asia. You see why they need uh, the Ahadi in Africa. They can't care for themselves, so they need to hang out with other people. Good lord. <laughs> Guys are trying to get her, but... And I feel like if it feels like there's a lot of room for homebrew when it comes to the girl. I might just do something with them with uh, 3.5. Please make get them not useless somehow. Yeah, I gotta get around to writing for them because I got I gotta write for Kinfolk, I gotta write the Sam and Vion, and I gotta write the Burning Ground. You got a lot first. of work to do. And then possession, and then after I release the player's guide, it's gonna be uh it's out when it's out kind of schedule. Well, yeah, it's a fan Cause... project. Yeah, so I've set the deadline. I'm almost done. The project's almost done, but after that I'm just gonna do it for fun. Yeah, that's fair. Well, I mean, yeah, and... that's that's the point. And that that's it. That that that's the tribes. Behold, you see how inconsequential that was. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> and as for their auspices, uh, they have auspices. They have a blessing from Luna, and it's pretty much just the Ragabash, the Urge, Eldox, Galliard, and Arun by different names. Yes, they call them that, different that, names. That, I that, didn't that, know which one was which when I took my notes. Yeah, uh, that, that 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 that's it, really. That that. <laughs> yes, it is the. Arkas, uh, Uzmati, the Kojubat, the Ki, and the Rishi. But for the time being, we'll let we'll let Ryan get on with uh, what was it? Relationships. relationships. Or what? Yes, relationships. 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 There is uh, a they have a relationship with each and every other tribe. Believe it or not, they actually have stuff to say about them. Even the tribes that think they're dead. <laughs> mm. All right, we're going to start at the very top, the Black Furies. Uh, these courageous female uh, females revere the mother and understand the concept of protection rather than mere savagery. We have little to blame. We have little blame to lay on the Furies' doors. Jesus Christ. It's, today's going to be one of those days. It's every it's... single Sunday so far. Ever have one of those days? <laughs> The Bonars. In the days when the Storm Eater ravaged the West, many Bonars sought places in the high mountains where they panned for gold and lived on the leavings of the more fortunate. Some of these Garu were directly responsible for awakening Garol in hibernation when they stumbled into our dens. All right, golden As- here. You go in here? Yeah, hey, I'm looking for gold. Is there some gold in this cave? You know what they say about waking a sleeping bear. <laughs> the bear's going to cower. All, it takes all the money. <laughs> wow. <laughs> As their carelessness allowed some of our most powerful members to help combat the Storm Eater, we thank them for doing so. And we apologize to those who just whose discoveries awakened Garol. <laughs> We're still enraged. We condemn their spirits to Gaia. Nowadays, sad to say, we sometimes find our bear kin competing with the Nars for the best trash heaps. I mean, that that is true. You, you see, bears will go into your backyard and your campsites and look through your garbage and, fi- and eat all of your delicious garbage. Yes. They will also open your car doors. Oh, this yeah, is why you got, garbage. You got, you got to get that old uh, Wawa cup that you had Coke in out of your car before the bear breaks into it. Yes. It's true. You got to, like, whenever you're camping, you got to, like, hide your snacks up in a tree so a bear can't get to them. Yeah, but the bear can climb a tree anyway. Yeah, I know. So it's kind of counterintuitive. So, so the bear well, wants they, to eat. He's going to come in and eat anyway. Well, it's better to they, hide they it in can. the tree than put it in your fucking tent. Yeah. You, don't, you don't put it next to the tree trunk. No, you hang what it you, up on one of the branches. What you, what yeah. you gotta do is you gotta use the Metaskiff burrow, and then you bury your food underground where the bear can't get it. 
I know bears can dig. Yeah. Putting them by the tree is the most logical sense, as long as you keep it away from the tree trunk, because one, the branches can't sustain a, a like thousand pound bear, uh, and two, bears aren't smart enough to if they do somehow manage to get onto the branch, uh, they're not smart enough to pull up the rope. Well, so he's got to get a he's got to get the big pinata stick and then smack it out of the sky. Yes, they're, they're, <laughs> bears can't use tools. They're not the, crows. The the man they learned though it's all over. Yeah, yep. that's true. <laughs> At least it's not like a corax with a knife in its beak. Somebody's oh, gotta call a Zazel from Demon to Fall and teach him how to use tools. How about no? Okay. The children of Gaia. What can I say about a tribe that so obviously tries to be peaceful and open minded? I know many folk who believe that these Garu are the most sympathetic and most gentle of their kind. They may be, but their politically correct stance and rhetoric always seems to come after the fact when people are willing to admit they were wrong and are looking to assign blame for the fiasco. It's never the children of God, children's fault. They always try to do their best, but somehow that best always emerges after the Garu have achieved their objective. Uh, like it is. Call me suspicious, but they always strike me as the protesting too much. <laughs> They're always out with the little picket sign saying, um, um, uh, uh, tell her, uh, tell her Bassett racist, sexist, KKK, tell her Bassett go away. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean? I didn't discriminate against no one. <laughs> Except a fucking get. Hey, I don't know. That shepherd's pie was kind of... I gotta, uh, gotta oh, drink something. Damn, my throat's dry. Continue with the Croatan. The Croatan. The noble Garu. One of the three tribes that crossed into the Pure Lands no longer exist. They yep. sacrificed themselves to rid these lands of the Eater of Souls, a hideous worm beast. Sometimes I wonder if we will follow in their footsteps. The few of us sacrificing ourselves to stop some terrible corruption and heal the land once more. Whatever their actions in the War of Rage, and they were not among the worst. The Croatan made up for with their costly victory. It's a pity more Garu don't emulate their selflessness. Oh, well, you're one to talk. <laughs> uh, honestly. <laughs> honestly. Oh, I just, um, we're, we've been acting like babies so far, but now the pompous attitude comes out. Yeah. Speaking of pompous, the piano. <laughs> Man, fuck you. <laughs> The werewolves enjoy many of the same arts we do, especially poetry, story, and song. We acknowledge their artistry in these endeavors. That is all. No girl of the pure lands will forget that they were some of the first to maraud across our home, taking what they wanted with no regard for the folk already here. See, the ge when the Gavfamers do it, everybody loses their mind. But when the Fianna do it, everyone's okay with it. Well, yeah, because we bring beer to the party, obviously. You see, riddle, riddle me this, Batman. But why is it that, um... <laughs> that's not the Riddler. I was, I was no. oh, I fucking hit both the Joker. <laughs> no. See, I, how did I you, like how did you fuck that up? Her in one. <laughs> I was going somewhere that... <laughs> I don't know. I like... It. Yo, yeah, everybody get but see get a finger they take stuff. See, at least we 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 we, we take the land and then we set up a party where the land was so can you blame us? The Gafimers take the land and then they keep it, they hold on to it, they don't lose it to the Gafimer Slayer down the line. Uh yes, the Gafenris. These fierce Garo were some of our most dangerous opponents in the War of Rage. Yet Curiously, curiously, they respected us and acknowledged Bear as a mighty totem. In return, while we may still harbor hatred for them in our deepest soul, we must tender respect for our most honest adversaries. There we go. They killed hey. us, and they were gentlemen about it. 
<laughs> Glass walkers. Oh no. It yep. took a while for many of us to realize that these are the members of the tribe we knew in the 19th century as the Iron Riders. Then they promoted the growth of the railroads. Now they cling to modern technology in the face of criticism from other Geru. Few of us live in cities, yet we understand the glasswalkers, at least, as well as their own kind, sometimes better. Glassworkers, at least, as well as their... Oh, okay, never mind. I yeah, we, we, it's a weird sentence. Because we do not shun the making of things as the sign of the weaver's ma uh, machinations? Yes. Machine machinations, yeah, machinations, yes. We have some common ground with the glasswalkers. After all, they would have no cities in which to walk had we not taught humans the art of agriculture and handicrafts. Ooh, there we go. Maybe I... I did give the Fianna a camp in 3.5 that was based around the girl. Maybe I should have given it to the glassworkers instead. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Up to you. <laughs> Next, all right. Next up, red talons. Yeah, the, this is the tribe that killed the most girl during the War of Rage. By the way, <clears throat> uh, debatable. Uh, of all the Geru, we best understand the red talons, a strictly lupus tribe. We know their rage and sadness as their kinfolk die a little more year by year, as they disappear from places they once roamed freely leaving the bitter ashes of near extinction in the wake. Indeed, we understand the Red Towns all too well. Understand, not agree with. Where they, where they blame humans for all the ills of modern life, we realize humans are Gaia's creatures too, and deserve a place in the world. Where the Red Talons would exterminate, we seek to educate. But we weep alongside the Talons for their lost mirrors, our own. And um, this is coming from the same guy who said it was perfectly okay to go through with the Imperium. So, um, yeah, you kiss up the Gaia, but Gaia would greatly throw you in the garbage the minute she realizes she doesn't want to play with you anymore. I don't want to play with you anymore. And the girls. Hey, this just is why I mean. Trash can. Guy is not the the innocent little victim. So many people that play werewolf think she is. Nah, nah guy is just as bad as the worm. Yeah. No, you no. want to know what I want to know? What's that? What? Hey, Gaia, the worm, and all these people created all these beings, and supposedly Gaia created humans as well. But humans are weak. Like. They don't even know it's, what's going on in their own world. It's because the worm is the one that's teaching them. Yes. And the worm is smart. The worm knows, tell them enough information for them to survive, but not enough information for them to overcome the worm. It's the Order of Hermes talking about the Demiurge, where the Demiurge being the worm in that case only tells you enough for you to live a little vapid life of consumerism and never actually learn to rise above the Demiurge. If that's the case, then then I know that hunters are supposed to have their powers given to them by capital G God. So yes. Then, how, then what does God know of Mother Gaia? Then. Yeah. It's that. Yes, that um, that Shriat, uh, the Naga were the ones that told the story the best. Where the Wild was the oldest out of all four of them, but at the same time you had the capital G God, and as to where he came from, well. We don't know, and he's not going to tell you because it's all part of the long game. But he made the wild. That's how it works when you combine Demon to Fallen with Pearl of the Apocalypse. That okay? That's yeah. that's a neat point yeah. there. Yeah, it's it's not it's not like he was Lucifer because Lucifer was made to you know, set like design the world after the, the wild made it. Where I guess you could see who's like kind of like working with the Weaver in a way. But then the fall happened, Lucifer rebelled, um, lost to Michael, and then was cast into hell along with his 666 um, demonic host. 
and thus began Demon of Fallen, and then he got replaced by the Weaver. I still love that. That's how. That's one of the neat things about this game is the mix between theology and and like pagan myth. Yeah, I'm, our friend of the show Fox Kitty says that Demon of Fallen ruins everything, but now I think Demon of Fallen actually kind of completes the story. Yeah, everything goes full circle, really. Yeah, take that, viewer. <laughs> <laughs> Completely kidding. <laughs> well, we'll apologize to Fox, not to anyone else. Yep. True, 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 true. Yeah, Fox is a good I, guy. We all like Fox. Yes. The Shadow oh, Lords. The Shadow Lords. Shadow These Lords. conniving werewolves claim to be the power behind the throne of Yeru society. They are. So be it. We accept that they are much to blame for the War of Rage. Speaking in their greed for power, knowledge they had no right to covet. We didn't trust them then, and we don't trust them now. Should you have any reason to associate with our Shadow Lord? Don't believe anything they say, and sleep with one eye open. I mean, after all, we're going to drop two big damn bombshells come to Zimichi episode. Yep. Oh boy, I'm I'm excited for that. <laughs> I stopped and the moving uh, the Jesus. good guys. Uh, sil- silver rings? No, silent striders. striders. We count the striders among the few Garo we consider actual allies or friends. Solitary wanderers like ourselves, they seek no power other than the power of freedom. They often bring us news we would otherwise fail to hear. We make them welcome, provide them with entertainment for a night or two, or ally briefly to deal with a problem, then wish them good speed as they bid us farewell again. That Nobody has anything bad to say about the Sonic Striders. That's why I like them so much. Well, honestly, they're, <laughs> I don't think they're around anyone long enough for them to hate them. Because they get, they bring ghosts wherever they go. We might need to check in on the Ratkin, because I think the Ratkin hate them. Probably. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. the, so, uh, the Silent well, No, their, their totem is Owl, so of course the Ratkin hate them. Yeah, yeah because, because what do owls eat the most? Uh, mice and rats. Or rodents. Yeah, yes. they're delicious. If you weren't so tasty, Owl wouldn't eat you. Owl, <laughs> Curious I can't say Ratkin Lawrence. turning point silent stride. <laughs> <laughs> I can't say rodents because I recently found out that porcupines and beavers count as rodents. But I have the defense mechanism. You, you can't pick up a beaver and fly with it and then the porcupine sticks into you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. They, Those two are considered rodents, I guess. So... Hey, I can't say all rodents. I didn't know that porcupines could throw quills, though. Yeah. Yes. Like I yes, saw, they can. I saw a video of a girl who was working at like this. I think it like a zoo or an animal hot reserve or something like that. And she was like, she had a porcupine that was like sitting upside down on like a branch she was holding, and it threw like a fucking. A, like a fucking shotgun shell of flechettes into her chest, and it, her bra stopped it from getting her heart. And she was yeah. just staring at it <laughs> as there's these fucking giant needles sticking out of her chest. And I was like, holy fuck, she just almost got game ended by a fucking porcupine. <laughs> now, imagine if, it, imagine if it was venomous. Oh, my God. that Dude, I'd be shitting myself. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> uh that's my next D D monster guys. A there we go. The venomous porcupine. That's a venomous porcupine. Where's my notebook? You got you gotta write that down before you forget about it. Yep. You want me to do the silver fangs? Right there. Yes. Right. So fangs. These Geru considered themselves kings and leaders of all the werewolves. They were the organizers of the War of Rage. In their pride and elegance, they sought to wrest from us what did not belong to them and made demands rather than asking for our help, which told us they were not ready to learn our lore. I can't provide that the 
I can't prove that the instability which affects the Sorofang tribe is a punishment sent upon them for their shameful actions, but I suspect that their madness may only be cured through the use of our healing gift. We will not know if this is so until they come to us for help in a proper, contrite manner and ask for our help. If they had only asked rather than demanding, oh, much pain would have been averted. Even in our sorrow and anger with the silver fangs, we do acknowledge our common roots, for they arose in Russia, as did our brown barrican. This sounds very arrogant and very, um, pompous. That's because it is. The, the, passi the passive aggression in the silver fangs <laughs> entry... <laughs> I mean, that's all they deserve, <laughs> really. I can't see a blame them. You know, you put dick in, you get dick out. <laughs> oh my god. Nobody likes the surfing dude. Like, seriously, nobody has well, anything good to say. That's because they fucking about suck at their job. <laughs> they do. They do. <laughs> they fucked over everybody in Nagaro. <laughs> No, I, I can't even find a character that's like neutral about the Surafangs. Just nobody likes these guys, period. No. The most they get is like, yes, we understand they're leaders of the Gara. We need to respect them for that. At worst, it's just like they fucked us over and they need to die. Instead, I gave them the fate they fucking deserved at 3.5. <laughs> yes. I am excited to see, how, see what people do with that. Uh, it'll make sure some wicked art. Like, it all. I mean, it would be nice if people played it, but, like, you know, just <clears throat> showing that I've made a product. Well, that we yeah. definitely made a product. I probably should, like, build a website I, that we can host to I, actually I, have people download it. No, no website. We're just going to use a server. Well, I mean, fucking somebody's got to do it. That'll look good on my resume yeah, but, now. I'm thinking about it. We, we could just use a uh, Discord. Uh, you want to build the site? I have the skills to do so. After all, we know you're, how good you are in assembly. Oh d no! You don't use assembly for a web page. You use uh, use uh, what's it called? HTML. No, no, the other one. JavaScript. No, the other one. The fuck you talking about, Ryan? C plus <laughs> plus. No. C plus plus. There you go. No, you don't yeah. use C plus plus is an application development software. Use HTML for web pages. No, 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 no. You use Notepad. Mother <laughs> equals 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 equals. <laughs> and now that you've written down the thoughts, can you tell us about the stargazers? I just finished down writing the thoughts. Uh, All right, the stargazers. Ha! Huh. Strangely, while most other creatures see the stargazers as inoffensive and somewhat spacey, we wonder why our Asian kin were so thoroughly decimated in the war of shame. Could it be? that these peaceful guru reached out to Akuma, pointing out, uh, sorry, pointing to their love of stars and our fascination with the constellations of Ursa as common ground, then treacherously slew them when they let their guard down? Right. I have no proof that this is so, but whenever I'm tempted to accompany a stargazer on a trip to admire the heavens, I always wonder what those long ago stars witnessed. You got killed in the War of Shame because you listened to what the Quay Jin had to say. Don't listen to the Quay that's Jin. A, that's a simple truth of the matter. You got snookered by the Yama Kings. That's why you got killed. Yes. I wonder if it's, uh, if it has something to do with your tribe Bane that makes you sit and listen to the villain monologue just in time for them to corrupt you. Or out no use presence or dominate. <laughs> oh, every James Bond Matt, I movie had, ever. I had fucking uh, I had high hopes for you lot. But now I'm just disappointed. You guys are idiots. Let's talk about the Uctena. Yes. The Uctena. This tribe of Geru was once of the three who came to the Pure Lands and helped bind the Banes here. Intensely and insatiably curious, the Uktena, or the Uktena, would like to know all of our secret lore, and some of them might not be too picky even now about how to acquire that knowledge. They were fierce opponents during the War of Rage, but our quarrel with them was short-lived. 
in coming to the Pure Lands, we all had too much to do to fight one another. Many of the tribes who bred with the Yuktena came to revere beer, uh, Bear as a healing totem, an occurrence that helped us smooth relations between us. Still, not all Uktena can be are to be trusted. They speak much of the displaced by the European Garu, but they say little concerning the takeover of our places and those of the other changers who made the Americas their home. We do have many things in common with the Uktena and the Wendigo, for that matter. All of us feed our spirits through craft. Yeah, our spirits through crafting and performing. Some of our customs are also similar. We are more likely to be found in Uktena company than in company of most other werewolves. We just need to remember to be careful what we say around them and not reveal too much. So that what they mentioned with the second War of Rage. Is that the the Boondock scene with the board I can't get away with saying moment? Oh, where yes. at the end of it, the Ten are just going, Hey, hey man, wait! This is this stupid. Is stupid. <laughs> they realized what they were doing, killing Girl, and then quickly stopped. At least they figured it out. <laughs> and... Yeah, well, as we mentioned with the Octena and the Octena episode, they do take on the, the totems of other changing breeds as a sign of good faith because they like all the other Pharah. Yeah, Pharah has Octena secrets. Are, the Octena are good people unless you're white. Yes. Well, they, they, they <laughs> hate you, but they have kind of a reason to. They, they hate you, but they're not going to kill you like the Wendigo do. They're just going to get you canceled. Okay, I haven't done nothing, but all right. And last but not least, the Wendigo. Let me move to that. Wendigo. The Garu who inhabit the northern United States and Canada. Seem to embody all the rage bestowed upon the Garu. Their anger burns as brightly as it did a hundred years ago. We understand their pain. Like the Uktena, the Wendigo practices handicrafts and arts that we also embrace. Proud and fierce, the Wendigo bred with the Plain Indians and have had to bear their kinsfolk displacement along with their own. Rumors that they practice cannibalism, not too surprising considering the totem, hmm. may be a misunderstanding of a certain tribal practice. After all, we used to tell we used to tell their tribe to eat us when they are in need. Then again, their anger may have laid them open to pattern breakers' corruption. Uh, speaking as a character I'm soon to play as Ends the Road, uh, she, she will gladly devour any girl NPC that dies in the middle of our game, Kyle. Uh, you I mean, might I, run into one. I mean, after all, it's the, that meat is going to go to waste, it's going to rot, make some disease, or the worm is going to try to possess it. Uh, yeah, I might put one in there. It will turn you into a fabulous jacket upon your death. As long as you use all of it. <laughs> Next up, the Pharah Breeds. I, I, I did send you the Pharah Breeds, right, Ryan? He has gone silent. He's muted. Man. Ryan, why must you do this? Sorry. Uh, I was swearing at my browser. Yeah. Oh, it happens. It, it, it keeps Swear. trying to open up a YouTube channel, and I try to close the notification. He's getting hacked by Mr. Beast as you speak. No. So, the, uh, the fair breeds, otherwise known as cousins. The Ajaba. Hyenas. Hmm. Never actually met a Ajaba. Of course, I've heard the same rumors about their animal kin that everyone else has. They are dirty, the slinking carrion, uh, carrion eaters whose madness yes. expresses itself in insane laughter. Somehow I can't believe Gaia would create such a despicable animal then craft a rare creature from it. So maybe we shouldn't believe everything we hear. Still, I like to meet one before, before forming any judgments. I don't know if you want to do that, but uh, go ahead, buddy. 
brother. Uh, you've seen the Lion King, right? Then you've uh, then you got a good idea as to what the Ajab are going to be like. Yep. Honestly, favorite characters from the Lion King were the okay. hyenas. You know what? That's yeah. fair. You, you like the, the the modern one they did, where they have Eric Andre voicing one. Honestly, Wait, hold up, he what? And they got Eric Andre voicing a hyena in it, and I really would have loved it if it was just like Eric Andre just acting as himself, but as a hyena. <laughs> It would have been funny as shit. <laughs> hey, Eric. Look at me. Bitch. If I'm, if I'm going to be completely honest, this... I was originally going to make... Fuck. Come on. Copy. Base Grim off this... This hyena right here. Oh, that's kind of fucking hilarious. Yeah. And... and then... And then I changed it to be what it is now. That is scary as shit. Wolf had a pea brain. I don't know. Gr Grim's already kind of fucking dumb. <laughs> he's a he, get he, he rune. They are not known for their intellect. But his glasses, he's very distinct. Yeah, he's got glasses, yeah. Glasses <laughs> he's are you wouldn't, hit a, you wouldn't hit a werewolf with glasses on, would you? <laughs> 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 as much as I want Grim to say that, I that'd be too cowardly for him. And, and then he like sucker punches them as he says it. Yeah, I don't know. Gr Grim was Grim's too head on for that kind of thing. <laughs> so I would probably that... say that to him, and then Grim would punch him. Mm. Next up is the spider. Ah, uh, the Anasi, and Anasi. The spider folk tend to occupy different places than we do. Many other shifters look on them with grave suspicions, perhaps because we are not so against the weaver's crafts as others. We do not automatically condemn the Anasi because of their webs. They possess knowledge. We would like to, we would like to learn. Oh, Jesus Christ. We would like to learn. Though it is doubtful we have any lore to offer them in return, that they would want, or that we would be willing to give them. I have heard that they now serve the worm, but I have no proof of that. Other rumors say they fight the cor uh, corruption, the corruptor on the front lines. I need to mute this Discord. Why? Well, what happened? It's, it's, it's yeah, it's going off every time I'm reading, and <laughs> it's making me pause. <laughs> <laughs> slightly distracting me you gotta set your stats to D&D &D. Uh, the best at <laughs> immoral promiscuous gossips at least among themselves the werecats spy out spy out everything that happens in Gaia's creation though we don't want to practice their lax ways, we sometimes compare notes and share stories with the best at. They too suffered from the werewolf's attack. We aid them when we can and remain friends. Okay. Mm. Kind of surprising, but okay. <laughs> Do bears and cats get along? Well, um... There is a there is a VI can pull up where like a bear is like found a cat in nature and then a cat just follows the bear around. That is wow. kind of funny. Yeah, man. Let me see it. Like not like um not like the the actual sort of um like big cats that the that the best are, are supposed to be like an actual like tabby cat. Is that yeah? I found it. I found it. You're you're probably going to get an advertisement if you try pulling up the video though. But uh, here's the link for it right here. Yeah, I, I'll I'll give it a shot. I'll see if it does or not. Uh, you got ad block rough, right? No ads. Okay, uh, where yeah. is it in the video? Oh, there it is. A few weeks yeah. Old. Yeah. So there's the cat walking around there. Where is there's there's the bear over there? Yeah, and it's just like, cool, like cool with the cat. Yeah, so the bear's like walking around, and the cat's just kind of like running through the uh, running through the, the woods next to it. Yeah, yeah. You see, you see, the cat's smart because he knows that the bear's gonna be the one to find the food. Yep. Yes, yeah, the cat's just kind of following him. The bear isn't really paying the cat any attention. Yeah, I'll, I'll let this big lunk um, 
do all the work for me, and then when he finds the food, then I'll eat. I, I I gotta say, like, even though I know bears are, like, incredible predators and, like, super vicious and terrible, there's the cat batting the bear in the nose, and the bear's just, like, licking the cat, like, huh, can I eat this? <laughs> like, quit touching me, keep touching me. <laughs> it's kind that of adorable bear. to watch, though. I actually really like it. <laughs> that okay, bear uh, can sorry. decimate that cat in one paw swipe. Yes. He could. So, uh, Wait, pass the best step, where are we at? Yeah. The Korax. Call. The Were Ravens talk too much. They flit around all over the place, poking their beaks into some things they ought to leave alone. Of course, they sometimes share that knowledge, making them valuable scouts. We are. What does that say? Ambivalent. Ambivalent about the Korax. We feel some gratitude to them for helping them save many of us during the War of Rage. But you also know that many of them acted as spies for the Garu, pointing out our hiding places to the werewolves to start with. Well, I can't fault them for wanting to survive, I'm not sure I'm comfortable with the idea that they did so at the expense of other changers. Yeah, they did. They really did just like snitch on everyone just to ensure their own survival. As we described with the Korax. Playing both sides. I like them already. <laughs> now for one we barely talk about, the Kitsune. The Kitsune. Were foxes. I know very little about them. Not even the European Goral are familiar with them. Which is odd considering how long foxes have been both there and here. None of our origin tales are at least those that I've heard of, mention them at all. They prefer the fields. We prefer the mountains and forests. I know nothing evil of them, except they are said to be clever and crafty. So I'm willing to keep an open mind. They are very smart. Um, for context's sake, they're the last changing breed that Gaia made. And this was after she lost a considerable amount of power to the worm. The Kitsune are meant to stay hidden because they're meant to survive the apocalypse and then rebuild the world in the post-apocalypse. That's what they exist for. That's kind of neat, actually. Yeah. And they're the Kitsune, and they're rare foxes, and even though foxes are everywhere, most of them are only in Japan. Yeah. Makole! Makole! Ole. And I thought I only knew a little about the Kitsune. The lizard folks suffered as we did in the War of Rage. They also withdrew. I'm not sure what they've been up to recently, if anything. But I do know they are not creatures who want others' company. You know, it's a rep reptile. <laughs> these Garul are comparing themselves to a lot of these other uh, tribes. Is there... I feel oh, like I've there... said that word, uh, the, that that phrase, uh, the they, they keep... blank they... blank suffered as we did in the War of Rage. Oh, we suffered as we did, we suffered as we did. You guys like ran away and you fell asleep. Mm -hmm. And now instead of like coming back and trying to do something about it, you're still content with staying asleep. I mean, sleep is pretty dope, not gonna lie. My suffering is more important than your suffering. Yep. I honestly, I wish I was in bed right now. Me too. I'm very <laughs> tired. <clears throat> Where I'm from, we called him Demon. Please put me down. I'm very tired. <laughs> the new Wisha. <laughs> yes, new Wisha. The story I earlier ought to. Uh, Jesus Christ, Ryan. Yeah, that, that for whole... some reason, like the background image with the with the new Wisha is very dark in the scan. Yeah. Uh, the story I told earlier ought to tell you all you need to know about the Nuisha. The Ware Coyotes are incredible trickster, tricksters who embody the laughter of Gaia and keep us from taking ourselves too seriously. We share a common background with our kinfolk connection. Bear, Coyote, and Raven all serve as powerful totems for the natives of the Pure Lands. Thus we cherish the Nuisha as our pesky but lovable close kin. And finally, somebody has something nice to say about the Nuisha. Yeah, the girl. 
I don't know if that counts for much, though. Yeah, d don't expect that to come from anyone else. No. Next up, the rats. Eh, the rats. The rats inhabit the cities and rarely cross paths with us. If they are at all like their animal kin, I'd be wary of cornering one. They said <laughs> less than they did about the McColl and the Kitsune. I don't want to deal with the rat kin. I mean, it's a rat. Get rid of it. Yeah, rats are a pain in the ass. Fuck you, rat. They say to build a better man one. trap. The Rokia. Rokia? Rokia. Rokia. Although we frequent rivers, we have very few occasions to visit the oceans. Therefore, we know almost nothing about the Rokia. I read Jaws, but I have no idea what application has to the shark people. Hmm. Not at all. That was wormish propaganda to make you scared of the Rokia so they can get away with killing Rokia. I mean, like, That's why that movie was made. It, it's a shark. <laughs> yeah. I... It's a fish. You can rotate a shark. Where's the... Hang on. Sh let me see if I can find the gif of get rotated, idiot. To find the shark. You can uh, rotate a shark on a spit. Oh, there we go. Ro get rotated, the idiot. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> Spin the shark. It's so dumb, but I... <laughs> <laughs> you know how hard that must have been, must have been to do? <laughs> and he made it look so fucking easy. Have that, you tried turning something underwater? Right there. <laughs> like, the shark might probably did all the work for you, given the way he was turning. Yep, I I I've been diving, but I've never I've never seen a shark while I was diving. <laughs> so somebody's gotta give a Rokia friends a, a helping hand somewhere down the line. Uh, Brian, I'm gonna give you a reading break. I'll go through the outsiders. All right. Uh, vampires, they suck. That the girl really don't like the vampires. These creatures are the walking dead who feed off the living to sustain themselves. Now keep in mind it's okay when we raise the dead, but not okay when they do it. Uh, one particular kind who calls themselves a gangrel often exist in or travel through the wilderness. Some of them cause no problems. Others forget who protects the wildlands. They make fierce opponents. Never think that because one looks young, she's weak or inexperienced. Uh, if you see a vampire, kill it. They also say the worst thing about a vampire is that they can change you into one of them. They call them the Umphala, the soul dead. Uh, the Geru call them the Abomination. Or they are Gerald and the Geru that, upon losing all of their temporary gnosis and permanent gnosis, they become mindless beasts that will continue to attack anything and everything until they forget to day sleep and then burn up in the sun. If that happens, game over. <laughs> You will eventually lose yourself to a beast that you can't pain. Look, mate, I'm just trying to hunt for Christ's sake. Leave me alone. Next up, the mages. They don't talk to the mages. Uh, they have herbalists and occultists within the girl, and they occasionally will interact with a mage, but this is super, super rare. And they don't trust them because there's this weird sense of arrogance about the mages. Like, something about every and all mages just rubs them the wrong way. They try to avoid a mage whenever possible. Uh, next up, a wraith. Only time we have seen a wraith is when we are in the fringes of the Dark Umbra to fight a death bear, which is a, um, a mistaken Breath of Gaia right. Um, or now you've created this demon that's going around in the Umbra destroying everything. Um, I have wondered if they are enough like the Umbral Spirits that we might find them compatible with um, making a fetish. I have heard that there are many possible abilities to affect the material world within Wraiths. If that's so, would they be willing to help us, or do they hate us for still living while they're dead? The answer is yes, you can kind of sort of make a fetish with a Wraith, but it doesn't work off of fetish rules. The Wraiths in Wraith the Oblivion have a, an arcanoid called Embody, 
but they will possess an item and are able to manipulate the item while inside of it. So, yes, that is possible. Oh, that's kind of neat. Now, the only thing, the only people that are really going to be able to use those are the Sonic Striders. Hmm. Next up, the Changelings. Of all the others, we find the Changelings most like ourselves. They love music, poetry, song, and drama. They're passionate in art, sculpture, and other crafts. Such things give themselves um, the substance to remain, as they are fading rather fast in the everyday human world. Aside from their love of arts, however, we find changelings are a little too fickle, fickle for our taste. They often move so fast that we lose track of what we're trying to say to them, or they change their aspects, becoming morose and sullen, where a few minutes before they were happy and sociable. We don't understand them, but we find them interesting. And then they bring up mummies, and they say, to the best of our knowledge, I've never met a mummy, so therefore the bit is over. All right, that's it. We're done. We're done with relationships. That's it. Yeah, there was a lot of them to go over. And next up, the big stuff. Who did I give gifts to? I believe that was that you, Kyle. That would be me. And there is that, a fucking lot have, of them. We have eight gifts to read off of. Pick your favorites. Oh, bro, I, t I picked a fucking lot of them. I thought you Let's wanted see. me to do, like, one from each. Oh, dear uh, lord. There's see, so, but, so um... Barrett, let's say... What's up? How... When you were looking at the uh, the breed gifts, like the Hamid, the Medis, and the Ursid, how similar to those were... How similar were they to the... The, the, the Hamid, the Medis, and the Lupus? There were quite a few, um... There were quite a few gifts that I noticed uh, on the page that, you know, says as the as the Garrow gift, as the Garrow Philodox gift, as the Garrow Theurge gift, you know, because um, that like like we said in history, it was the girl that taught a lot of the Garrow what they know as far as gifts go. So yeah. a lot of them overlap, but there is still a lot of them that just the girl know that just the girl know. Well, um, I'm looking at this with you and. See, well, let me let me read off of a, a common girl gift, and then if you would read us an uh, Arcus Uzmati Ojibat Kie and Rishi gift. Okay, so one from one uh, from each of them, then, right? I, I will read off Fiddlefish for us. Okay, tell us about Fiddlefish. By invoking this gift and scooping her hand or paw in a river, stream, or other body of water where fish may be found, a girl can guarantee herself a nutritious dinner. That's kind of funny. <laughs> I I think that's all the description I need to read. Do you get what this is? Yes, you're quite literally just like <laughs> poke the water fish. Behold, uh, the fish will just jump into my hand and I pick it up and eat it. I I love in the description <laughs> it says guy if a actually <clears throat> if a girl overuses this gift, particularly if she returns to the same spot over and over, guy's disapproval of the Gaia's disapproval, the implied greed or laziness manifests in failure to produce a meal. And so Gaia exactly. can literally go like, okay, you're being too much of a lazy fat fuck. Go somewhere else. Yeah, e even though she's the bulldozer mom, she at least like says, you, you gotta clean up your room. You can't just eat pizza all day. You gotta go out and eat something else. Yep. And in order to use this gift, you gotta spend some gnosis, you gotta roll gnosis, and then to catch the fish that jumps into your hand, you need to roll dexterity and athletics. You see if Gaia blesses the girl with an additional fish. You also have healing tongue, which is mother's touch, ignore wounds, which is resist pain, sense pattern breaker, which is sense worm, ursa cleansing, which is resist toxin. You, you get the idea. Yes. Uh, a lot of these gifts were passed on to the uh, the Kiru. Yes. Did you want to go over Hamid Arcus gifts? Gift. Or, oh, Arcus gifts? Okay. Did you want me to skip yeah. uh, Hamid and Ursine? Yeah, because they're pretty much the same as Hamid and Lupus. All right, fair. Okay. So if that I mean, is the granted, case... Granted, the Ursine do get a unique little thing where they have Burrow, which is the Metis gift. Yes. Uh, Arcus. So uh, there's quite a few of them. I'm going to go with... Um, Probably a rank four gift. I'm going to go with Rejuvenate. All so, right. this is a rank four Arcus gift. Rejuvenate. 
as Garal, or any other creature for that matter, age. They tend to forget the playfulness of their youth. This gift combat this gift combats the burdens of age, bodily decrepitude, mental fatigue, or world weariness by imbuing its recipient with a new, renewed zest for life. Sometimes this refreshing of the spirit manifests physically, making the target feel and seem younger than her actual ears actual years, pardon me, although this gift does not literally make the recipient younger. It does promote a desire to relive the joys of childhood, and it often leads to a change in lifestyle that prolongs the illusion of youth and freshness. A gaffling of Ursa Minor teaches this gift. System. The player rolls wits and rituals, the difficulty of the target's willpower. Each success causes the recipient for, uh, a, of experience or to experience a temporary boost to one or more appropriate traits, subject to the discretion of the storyteller. Additional temporary dice may be added to abilities such as athletics or primal urge, or may return a point of lost willpower to the, to the subject of the gift. In other cases, the effects of the gift may manifest through role-playing, as a formerly jaded individual suddenly becomes interested in his surroundings again. The feeling of rejuvenation lasts for anywhere from one scene to one week, according to the judgment of the storyteller. This gift cannot be used on young people or animals. Only the weary of body or mind can benefit. So basically, like, as we said before, uh, this, satif this satisfies one of the stat one of the statures of the Ursa Code, which is, um, which is ne nurture the needy. Because humans will seek uh, the girl in order to find spiritual guidance. This is one way they can receive said spiritual guidance is through this gift. Uh, moving on from mm -hmm. that, I assume uh, Uzumati, U Uzumati gift next? Yeah, the... What we just discussed before the Arcast stats the Ragabash, this is their Arun equivalent. Yes. So And yeah, same rules apply when it comes to lunar phase, the size for auspice, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh this one I th or actually, yeah. This one is actually kind of neat. It's like a more advanced version of uh Ignore Pain. This is a rank four Uzmati gift. Delay the death bears coming. This gift allows a Garal or a designated individual the capacity to sustain massive damage without dying. While the use of this gift does not enable the recipient to engage in combat or other strenuous activities, it does keep the target alive long enough, in most cases, to allow for normal or magical healing to take place. A jaggling in service to Manji teaches this gift. System. The player spends a point of gnosis and rolls wits and occult or medicine. Each success grants the target indiv the targeted individual an additional incapacitated health level, thus making it possible to sustain normally fatal damage without dying. The girl may use this gift on themselves, though they may not do it if they are already if they have already been incapacitated. Just kind of neat way. It it's like it's like a mass ignore pain, I guess. Well, not really a mass ignore a, pain, but just like a more advanced version of it. Yeah, like re resist pain, but just a little bit better. Yes. I thought that was kind of neat, just the fact that, you know, they, they have that. They have a better version of it. Uh, moving on I to mean, the uh, Kojibot. When, when, you're, surra when yeah. you're surrounded by a bunch of girls who are crawling onto your back, stabbing you to death, you're going to need something like that. Yes. A breathe out of necessity. So what did you just read off? Uh, moving on uh, to the Kojibot. Kojibot, so there is an equivalent to this. The equivalent to this is, is it is their Galliard. Yes. Okay, so... Uh, we and then alternate world, we are the Kojibot clan. Yes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'm going to read one of their rank five ones because I think this one's actually very important. This is Prophetic Vision. This is a rank five uh, Kojibot gift. Girl lore keepers credit this gift for providing the earliest warnings of the War of Rage, even though many werebears ignored or misinterpreted the omens drawn from its use. By entering a deep trance, a girl may send his mind beyond the barriers of time and catch a glimpse of what the future holds. Words as well as visions come to the werebear, warning or alerting him to things that have yet to transpire. Unfortunately, these images, while vivid and often dramatic, require interpretation. Many who use this gift fail to understand what they have seen and heard. Girl believe that the disturbing images and phrases that seem to penetrate the current penetrate current uses of the gift Herald the impending apocalypse. A phoenix teaches this gift. System. The girl assumes a meditative state, while his player rolls perception and enigmas at difficulty 9. 
The player may spend Gnosis to lower the difficulty at a rate of one per, of one per Gnosis point. Almost immediately, the werebear begins to sense words and images, many of them distorted or extremely cryptic. The storyteller should not make these visions of the future impossible to fathom, but she should try to challenge the player by leaving the many avenues of interpretation open. No successes means that the vision or message from the future fails to come to the Garal, while a botch gives the werebear a false vision or warning. So, something that could have prevented the War of Rage had it been just a little bit better. You know, something like, um, was it the Harbingers to have something like this? Yes. They allow you to, they warn you of shit to come. <laughs> Kia. What's up? <clears throat> I, and some other thing, I drink some water. You, you drink that water. So who we've got next is the Kie. Yes, the Kie. Uh, they... As for who they are, I believe this is their... Now, looking at this, I believe this is the Feldox. No, it's the Theurge. This, this is a Theurge. Uh, this is a Theurge. So, I'm... Hmm, what should I do for this one? I, I kind of want to do another Rank 5, but there's also a Rank 4 that's actually kind of cool as well. Actually, I think Restore Sanity might be the way to go with this one. This is another Rank 5 from the Kia. Restore Sanity... This gift allows the girl to completely restore the mind of an individual who has suffered an intense mental catastrophe or has been deliberately driven insane by an enemy. Unlike the common gift, ease the fervid mind, this gift does not affect chronic mental states or permanent forms of insanity. It simply restores a traumatized mind to its former state. A jaggling of Ursa, Minor teaches, or Ursa Major teaches this gift. System. The player rolls wits and empathy and spends a point of gnosis. Only one success is necessary to bring the gift's recipient back from the edge of fear or trauma-induced madness. The effects of this gift are permanent unless something else occurs to shatter the subject's mind again. The gift cannot heal certain permanent derangements such as Midas defigurements or a Malkavian's madness. Although with five successes, the girl can cure Hirano. That's fucking crazy. See, the big baby paid off in the end because you just need to snuggle with the baby enough times, and then eventually the baby cures your depression. Yes, you just go to is... go to a girl and give him a hug and tell him it's all going to be okay, and he will restore now, your sanity. Now, you see, when we were talking with the Church of Gaia, that they said the only thing they really do with the um, with the girl is just they just snuggle with them. That's yes. it. Yes, that that's it. You just snu you just hug the the. The girl, and as the mechanic, you'll see her little depression meter deplete. Yes, the <laughs> fact that they can cure Hirano is spectacular, though. Uh, good luck approaching one, though, because they immediately distrust you as a werewolf. Yes, uh, Larishi, uh, the actual Philodox. Yes, uh, I kind of want to. I kind of want to read. Uh, I kind of want to read two of these because there's two that are pretty fucking cool. Um. First is a rank four from Rishi. Uh, bestow Ursa's blessing. A girl may call down the favor of the great bear on an individual of her choosing, granting that person or creature some tangible bonus or piece of good fortune. A jaggling of Ursa Major teaches this gift. System. A player rolls wits into Colt and spends a point of gnosis while describing the specific nature of the blessing she wishes to bestow. This boon can take the form of an automatic success in some endeavor by the recipient, or it may manifest as a temporary addition to one of the target's attributes, such as an extra die to strength or intelligence. If the girl wishes to make the blessing a permanent one, she must sacrifice a point of permanent gnosis to do so. That's fucking tight. You, you mm -hmm. basically just get a free XP boost for a short period of time, or an extended period of time, if they use a point of gnosis, or permanent gnosis. That's pretty fucking good. Um, I see... Th you see, there are just no objectively bad gifts with this. Like, if you're if you're at home and you're watching this and you're pausing the screen as Kyle's scrolling through all these, and taking a look at some of these as he scrolls by them, there are no real bad gifts with the girl. Oh yeah. And speaking of this one, I thought was just kind of fucking cool. Uh, rank five Rishi gift: Words of Doom. This gift enables a girl to curse an individual or an allied group of individuals up to five in number punishing them for some, for some gross misdeed. 
Some werebears believe that the origin of the Silver Fang's tribal insanity resulted from a curse placed upon them for their part in the War of Rage. Geral, who used this gift, tread a thin line between serving Gaia and becoming a tool of the Pattern Breaker, since the pronouncement of a curse upon an individual or group often reflects adversely upon the speaker, touching her, touching her spirit with darkness. A worm spirit teaches this gift. <clears throat> System. After the girl states the terms of the curse, the player rolls wits into cult at difficulty 9 and sacrifices a point of permanent gnosis to seal the effect. The words must the words used must specifically describe the terms of the punishment along with the means for lifting or escaping the curse. Quote, "You and your descendants shall never know unsullied happiness until you return that which you stole from my people." End quote. If the nature of the curse is particularly harmful, detrimental, or far-reaching, the storyteller may require the girl character to give up or, or up to even three points of permanent gnosis instead of one. I would like to reiterate, a worm spirit teaches this gift. That is a steep fucking price. A little bit of corruption, but, um, you know, you've got rage that's already the worm inside of you. Yeah. Death, and death you are born, so... You know what? Right? It's a devil deal, but... Um, you're getting direct benefits out of doing it. I see nothing wrong with signing on this. Let's go ahead. Let's learn it. Yeah, fucking... <laughs> you, you, and your Faust, you and your fucking Faustian bargains. Yes, yeah, so there we go. Well, if the Faustians from Demon to Fallen didn't make good deals, nobody would deal with them at all. That's true. What was the what was the Americanized version of Faust where they trade where he traded his soul for cash money? Uh, any real modern movie? That's fair. Where, where hub like hubris is the is the moral. Bart sells his soul to Millhouse for five dollars. <laughs> anyway, and how would the right master Ryan like to tell us about the rights? Yes, right time. The rights. We have well, five. First of all, you have the right. To remain fight silent. For your party. Yep. The party. Jesus Christ, I fucked up the song. All right. Rights. <laughs> there are only two rank ones. That's the right of greeting and leave taking, and the right of rending the gauntlet. I will be talking about the right of rending the gauntlet. <clears throat> Goral have such close ties to the Earth itself that entering the Umber requires a special right. Unlike the Garu, who can simply step sideways, Goral must physically rip a hole in the gauntlet, or they can travel beyond the confines of the physical world. In order to complete uh, accomplish this feat, the Goral transform into a Bajoran, hairs open into the Umber umbra and seeps through the tear immediately seals itself behind the girl this action invokes the delirium in normal humans who inadvertently come across a girl in the process of passing between worlds player spends a gnosis point and rolls a charisma and rituals versus the difficulty of the local gauntlet the time it takes to open a hole in the gauntlet and pass through depends on the number of success, uh, successes gained in the roll. One success means that it takes the roll five minutes, two, 30 seconds, while three or more indicates almost instantaneous ripping and crossing. No successes mean that Goral fails to tear the fabric of the gauntlet and may not make another attempt until an hour has passed. Botch strands the girl halfway between the worlds. Uh, the girl's affinity for the Earth makes returning from the Ombra a simple process requiring no role. That's so easy, it's kinda, easy, right? Kind of reminds me of uh, what was it, Fenrir? From uh, yes. a game that just dug a hole and was like, "Peace out, bitches." Yep. Well, no, it was a, it was a, it was a wolf spirit of grandfather thunder. I think it was. Yep. I gotcha. Yeah. It says, "I'm not letting you catch me. I'm heading home." 
Like, where the fuck are you? Go in your car. Get back here. We got to fight today. Did a deep umbra to get his, um, to get his gnosis back. Mm, I need I needed him to teach me a gift. I had a bastard. Technically, technically he's still a wolf spirit, right? You don't call Grandfather Thunder. He calls you. But, but your motherfucker, you standing right there. Yeah. You know, I've seen the song that says that. And now I'm, got. and now I can't give anybody gifts because I'm a ragavash now. Yep, you gotta call, you gotta call a poot. His other Wendigo friend to help you out with that. He's all the way up in fucking Canada. Don't worry, he's on his way. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> I, I'd, I'd rather go to my abusive uncle and ask him f to help me get a gift. To, to, to go old uh, d dirty Uncle David. A fucking Irish. He's a cunt. <laughs> fuck him. Let's see. What's the next That's one That's pretty here? gruesome. Level two. The right of the river portent. Grawl used this right as a means of foretelling the future. The Grawl enacting the right snags a fish with his claw from a stream. Splits open the fish's belly and reads the omens contained within. The information gained from this rite usually pertains to the girl who reads the omens and has to do with the immediate future. After catching the fish, which should be accomplished without using without the use of the fiddlefish gift, the fuck is that? We where do you just stick your hand in the? In the river and let the fish jump into it. Yep. Hey, a fish oh, in the gotcha. hand is worth two in the river. The Goral rolls a an intelligence enigma difficulty eight. The number of successes determine how clear and intelligible the omens and portents are. Portents are. It's actually kind of nice. It, it's a right. much lighter version of the. Um... Our respects. Well, no, the the uh, omen gift I was talking about earlier. Uh, well, well, so that, pre that pretty much is like hard respects. Like you take a fish, you split it open, you you look at how the guts fall, and then you read, oh, uh, that that stomach is um, uh, it's inflated. That means that something's good good's going to happen. It's like it's what the it's what the Malkavian anti tribute do. Remind me not to meet a Malkavian anti tribute. If a fish's gut is bloated, I wouldn't yeah. take that as a good sign. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good. It's good that because you, know. you didn't eat it. Yes. I mean, I'm not. I'm not a Roman centurion. I don't know how this works. Uh, for level three, there is only two options, and it's right of finding the ancient cash and right of pure land. Cash. Yeah. Uh, I that is the one I chose. The right of the finding ancient cash. Well, tell me about the cash. The right enables the girl enacting it to locate the hidden sites of the ancient treasures of his people. Before their withdrawal during the War of Rage, Goral hid many of their treasures and secrets in deep uh, places deep within the earth. They bound powerful spirits to guard some of the, these precious items. Other tre uh, treasures rest under the protection of the Goral elders who lie in a deep sleep of hibernation. By performing this rite, a Garo or a group of Garo gain a sense of hidden ca of the hidden cache's vocation. With each enactment of the rite, the Garo's knowledge of where to find the sought-for treasures become more precise. Eventually, the rite leads the Garo to the actual site itself and opens a gateway or passage to the hiding place. If the ancient cache lies in the umbra, the girl must rend the gauntlet in order to act, gain access to it. Once the girl has gained access to the cache, he usually has to discover the secret to opening the complicated locks which seal the actual treasures from intruders. This form, the form the right takes, consists of an elaborate and slow dance containing movements and steps that mimic the actions of a search party. You roll what? what's oh god. What you're telling me is that you can have an entire game with girl based around hunting for treasure. Uh 
spot. Yeah. That sounds fucking yeah, tight. I even do one shots. Yeah, X marks the spot, right? You come across a cave and an ominous spirit lurks in there. Go find this gold before the bonars do. True. <laughs> um, yep. You roll a wits and enigma, difficult eight or nine, depending on how well the cash is hidden. Each success gives a girl a sense of where to go to locate the desired object. The girl must accumulate a total of seven successes in order to home in on the cache. The requirement usually necessitates several rep repetitions of the right in order to gain enough successes. A failure simply means that the right must be performed again and that the girl has come to a temporary snag in the jury journey to a cache. A botch sends the girl in an entirely wrong direction. So you've <laughs> that one shot has the opportunity to be over before it even gets started. Yeah, it's it's got and the entire one shot, the entire story is that we just wasted time. That that is kind of fucking funny. And the Ravnos have already found the treasure. Yup. True. Fucking Ravnos. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, I love the rat. What do you guys think? I don't know. I'd you guys be. think Ban or Freed Spirit? Because I couldn't choose. Wait, oh, let, let yeah. me take a look at these. I gotta remember Damn. which one is which. Be. I think the ban uh, is actually kind of important. That's, yeah, tell All us right. about the ban. The right of the ban, or a right of ban. The girl uses this right to prevent the spread of secrets, if known, might cause harm to their people or their kin. The right acts as a mental deterrent blocking the target of the right from communicating a specific from communicating a sp specific secret in any way. That was a fucking sentence. The right acts as a mental deterrent blocking the target of the right from communicating a specific secret in any way. Garal frequently used this right on humans who have witnessed a Garal change forms or on those whom the Garal have brought to their dens for magical healing. The ban keeps subjects from speaking, writing, or otherwise imparting his knowledge to anyone. It does not, however, remove the information from the individual's mind unless coercion is used to force that person to overcome the to overcome to ban. In such a case, the power of the right is such that it actually removes the sensitive information from the target individual's mind, a sort of mystical self-destruct mechanism. Some Gural willingly undergo the right of the ban if they intend to spend long periods of time in the company of humans or non girl especially Guru. This makes certain that the Gural can't inadvertently give away any secrets in the old times, when the Garal acted as teachers and sharers of information for other changing breeds, the right of ban was not necessary. Since the War of the Rage, however, few Garal have gone into the world without having, without having the right performed upon them. The right itself ex uh, requires the Garal performing it to intone a hypnotic chant. <clears throat> stating that the nature of information the ban is meant to protect. The soothing sounds of the chant full uh, lull the target into a state of near slumber, which they awaken refreshed and unchanged, except for the placement of other inner prohibition of the ban. The player placing the ban... Ban must roll manipulation and rituals against the difficult of the subject's willpower, plus three. If the subject resists the right... Now, or uh, against a difficulty of six, if the subject cooperates with the enactment of the ban. So, it's a willpower plus three if you don't want to you know, be under this, right? Uh, it's just a difficulty this. of six. Yep. Yeah. Yes. 
if you're like, oh, get rid of this information, make me so I can't talk about it. It's, it's uh, I said, um, if any of you saw Hal's Moving Castle, that's what Sophie's under, where we're going to give you a curse that turns into an old woman, and then another curse on top of that, which means you can't talk about the curse. Yeah. It's like being this right is effective in, in the movie or in the show Recess. Yeah. yeah. It's effective on everyone, including Garu, other changing breeds, vampires, mages, and normal humans. That's, pretty that's just good. a good thing to have. <laughs> and uh, for this next one is something that I'm going to do after uh, after this episode, and it's the right of the long sleep. <laughs> I With thought you were gonna say fighting of... the death bear, and I'm like, yeah, that, that tracks for uh, that tracks for 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 Grim. <laughs> for Grim, yes, it'd be writing the fight, uh, right of the fighting of the bear. But uh, for Ryan, it's uh, the right of the long sleep. The Gr- Grim's in fight all day. Yep. Mm. Uh, with the performance of the right, the Garal may take an individual to a state of suspended animation, not unlike the bear's own natural hibernation ability. While in this state, the subject does not age, bodily functions come to a standstill, and uh, respiration drops to the absolute minimum. Respiration, not restoration. Jesus Christ. This right makes it possible to sustain incapacitated individuals uh, individuals for an indefinite period of time, keeping them alive so they can be healed, either naturally or magically, at a later date. Goral have used this right to save the lives of other changing breeds, including the Garo, as well as humans who have experienced massively bod- massive bodily trauma and cannot receive immediate attention. Use of the right on vampires places the creature in torpor. I was about to say it reminds me of torpor. Yeah, it really is. The same really go. is just torpor. It is auto torpor. It is yep. the girl's damn the heart flood. Uh, the girl sets the conditions which determine the length of the gargets slumber. Yeah, some there's some misspellings on the wiki. It's not great. I got you. Well, t- uh, <laughs> Usually expressed in terms such as "Do not awaken until the ellipse, uh, the eclipse of the moon," or "Rise when the Earth has completed five rotations around the sun." The girl rolls wits and rituals. Difficulty of the target's willpower. The number of successes determine the actual length of the right. Three successes or more indicates the right lasts according to the condition stated in the enactment. One or two uh, successes means that the target may not sleep for the entire period of the designated time within the right. And the girl sacrifices a permanent point of gnosis to seal the right. Jesus Christ! That is that is a pretty hefty. Uh, that's pretty hefty tax for that. But there's no limit. You could tell a vampire to sleep until the end of time. That's and if you true. roll enough ex- successes, they're gonna do it. Yep. You will awake on the day of my daughter's wedding. We're gonna day of my daughter's wedding. And the thing is, is that you don't have a daughter; you have a son. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would just say, uh, I would just say, sleep here uh, until the moon rises again, and then just leave them out in the fucking sun on the roof or some shit, and then they're yes. dead. And behold, you don't have the guts to actually put a vampire into torpor, so you're instead you're just going to use this on them. Yep, you're just yeah. like, hey, Sleep go to bed. until noon. I think it's news, but... be too late. Yeah. Honestly, I think the moment they start taking damage, they'd wake up, right? I... I th- I think that's the case, but it also... I could be wrong about that. Where I think you might just be incapacitated until until those conditions are met. Jesus Christ. Ooh. That's pretty rough. So that's well, why I mean, it's a rank 5, because it, it, it automatically ends an encounter. Yes. You know what's funny, though? It never says that uh, any more successes than one or two, that they do it for the entire thing. That's true. <laughs> it just says, target may not sleep for the entire period of the time designated within the right. 
you've got you've got some ambiguous wording with some of these, so I I guess that's room for the storyteller to decide how they want it done. Basically, yeah. Uh, and how can we make this episode go on for longer? Well, we can just talk about uh, mixing splats now. Yep. I mean, uh, John has already hinted to me at the possible appearance of a girl in uh, Rage Cross, New York. We have to. Uh, I imagine he's going to be a bit out of the way, though. So I don't know if we're going to find him, but if we do, then we do. Oh, see the bears and the bears are super chatty, and it's for dark ages. I can see the girl working with the with the Fianna, and if your game takes place before Hadrian's Wall, I could see the White Howlers. The White Howlers are pretty unpleasant to be around, but that is possible. In What's regards to modern, who's the best fucking friends? <laughs> they, you like them because you're used to their bullshit. Everyone else, no. Um, it was in the modern day, the Black Furies, the Children of Gaia, the Glasswalkers, and the Actena are the ones that get along with them the best. The Fianna, you gotta do some convincing. If it's a, if it's a girl that isn't hibernating. Uh, that they're a new girl that was born from a girl that finally decided you need to make more girl, they can get along with the Fianna great. If it's a if it's one from hibernation, they're going to remember the War of Rage and they're going to remember the Fianna uh, from the War of Rage, and that's not going to work out too well. In regards to other changing breeds, well, really, no other changing breed dislikes the girl. They just think they're pussies. Uh, I mean. With what we've read today, I think that that's a fair yeah. assessment of the girl. Very much so. As for as for vampire, think about how can you mix vampire into this? Well, they brought up the gangrel by name, which is kind of odd. But... It's because they keep bumping into the damn uh, gangrel. Does the gangrel want to live out in the woods and just bury themselves in the dirt and then crawl their way out like uh, the Night of the Living Dead when the sun sets. See, at least I am more self-respect than that. You see, uh, we were just having a good time looking for fish, and all of a sudden we see what looks like a zombie come out of the ground. Uh, sorry and about that. I got caught out in the sun yesterday. It's my fault. You got the... So, yeah, you're going to run to a gangrel eventually in your life. Um... Looking at the other changing breeds, I don't see them ever interacting with Ventru, Tremere, Toridor, or La Sombra. I don't. I just don't see that happening. Same with the Giovanni. I don't see that either. The Zumichi, I do. Really? That's because in Russia, which is where you've got the Ice Stalkers and the River Keepers, the Zumichi are everywhere around East Europe. So they would love to get their hands on Russia to expand their influence and just whoever the hell they wanted with the Russian people. And that would be a good crucible for your girl. Are you going to nut up and prevent this Zemichi from causing untold calamity to thousands of people? Because that Zemichi is going to listen to a damn thing you say. The Zemichi do what they do because they are the world's strongest beings and they know it. Yep. You've got to deal with that Zemichi through violent means or no means at all. Exactly. Also, in terms of teachers... Alcavians. Well, where they don't. They, I've been re good. Go I've been reading the four books of Transylvania Chronicles lately, and given that Octavio and Anatoly, reading about those two legacy characters, absolutely, I can see there being an interesting conflict with the Malkavians. Considering that Malkavians are all these different mad oracles and mad priests that warn about different calamities, like I'll know the apocalypse and Gehenna. So, combine the spiritual knowledge that the girl wished to impart with the practical knowledge that the Malkavians provide. And you have two, these two. Well, the Malkavians aren't really violent because now they're. Well, most of them aren't, but all their disciplines are nearly based around espionage and deception. You have these two trying to do a teach off where you have a girl that's trying to teach uh, some people to conserve the land, but then they start doing these almost like very unsustainable short-term practices because of Malkavian is going around telling people the world is going to end tomorrow. 
Yep, and they ba- it basically becomes like a smiling friends versus the frowning fiends kind of thing. And last one I can see is the Nosferatu in all, in all honesty. Again, because of the Russian origins, or is there something else you had in mind? Because the... Namely, just any clan that has animalism, but after looking a little bit more into Epsimilliard, I think eventually, because like once again with Russia, you are going to run into a Nosferatu at some point. Oh, yeah. The thing is, is that the Nosferatu don't give a shit about the changing breeds anymore because fuck Absimilliard. Dad doesn't love me, so I'm going to do nothing that Dad wants me to do. And that's going to be a strange interaction with your, with your girl and Nosferatu. As in, do I let you go? You seem to be doing your own thing. You look horrible. I would love to try to heal you, but I try healing you. It doesn't fix your affliction. Uh, you look like you're somebody who's knowledgeable. Oh no, you're using animalism on me. I don't notice until it's too late. <laughs> yep, because they're going to sit there and listen to them talk, and then the Nosferatu is going to use their blood point for for animalism. The, the, the Nosferatu have a lot of stuff to say. It'll be a <laughs> great trap for your girl. Yeah, it would. As for mages, looking down the line, I don't see these guys ever interacting with the Akashic Brotherhood, even though. The forest, uh, the forest walkers, funny enough, have interest in martial arts, and I might be getting that mixed up with the uh, with the mountain guardians. But I know there is a tribe of girl that likes martial arts, but I don't see them interacting with the Akashics. Same with the Celestial Chorus, the Cult of Ecstasy. I think the girl all straight edge, given that if sex puts them off this much, I don't see them doing any narcotics. Definitely not. Um, no dream speakers because they don't seem to like the dream speakers, even though the Actina do. Well, no Euthantos. They just don't and like mages. No virtual adepts, no sons of ether, no verbena. So the only mage guild I can see them interacting with is the Hermetics. Wait, why, and the, why the Hermetics again? They're fighting for the same thing, convincing humanity to not follow the teachings of the Demiurge. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, and. If a girl got his hands on the teachings of Hermes Trismegistus, you could really go somewhere with that. That'd a, be all kinds of fucked. You have a girl who discovers the testam- uh, the Gospel of Mary Magdalene and the Gospel of Judas, and then starts applying that in his teachings. And in terms of the technocracy, uh, absolutely not. No. That kind of, that's kind of a given. No. I could I could see a progenitor winning them over, given that the progenitors are the um, bioengineering mages that have the eternal life pill. So, uh, behold, you've got a dead guy. Well, behold, just pour this down his throat and they'll bring him back. They already no, have guys. No guy they don't need that. Yeah, but there's no bane possession with this one. It's science. That's... If we have a soul in an injectable needle form, you just stick it in that corpse and the corpse comes back. I don't know. I've, well, uh, I mean that that bind that would that would leave the potential to being droned, wouldn't it? Possibly, or it could just be. I I don't know. I don't know with the uh, with the progenitors, but they have the cure for death. <laughs> um, the Fondi, of course not, and Marauders, no. Um, next up with the Wraiths. Looking at the Wraith legions, we've got. I can see them getting along with the Iron Legion. Given that that's a group of ghostly old men that like to tell stories. Yep. Talk to yourself an elephant because you've been around for that many years. As we described with the Tremere episode, that was all told by a Wraith narrator. Oh, yeah. All the stuff that you would learn as a girl just from talking to one ghost. Yeah, um, that like could also stories. be. That'd be perfect. That could also be a fun uh, plot hook for a character where you're a, you're a girl that comes out of hibernation. And one of the beings you encounter is a wraith that you recognize from before you went into hibernation. And you're wondering, what the hell are you still doing here? And part of your little character quest is trying to find a way for this wraith to pass on. That's That'd be a neat story. Yeah, that's a lot of suffering for one character. <laughs> it is, though. Uh, changelings. Uh, Puka. Gonna be very hard not to eat them. Well, they're cute, fuzzy, and adorable, and they probably taste but, delicious. 
Yeah, a, a lot of them are rabbits, so d- d- do not shift into rabbit form around the girl. <laughs> yeah, no, that that's a quick way to be to be lunch. Uh, next up, the the issue. Oh, the the issue are all about storytelling. The girl would fucking love them. Absolutely, I can also see this working with um, the slua in all honesty. Really? Why the slua? Yeah, cause... Because the Slua are the weirdos that have a lot of stuff to say, but nobody wants to hear them say it. The girl are great listeners. So behold, Slua, you found the one person who wants to listen to what you have to say. That's kind of adorable. Uh, the satyrs, absolutely not. No. <laughs> no. No way, no way. If it, it's As sex repulsed as they are. Satyrs and... pull up like Lou Reed, the girl, and go, hey, babe, take a walk on the wild side. They can immediately turn around and run off. Yep. Uh, the Boggins, I can see them get along with the Knockers. I can see them get along with the, the in terms of the polar bear. Well, they well, they all love building stuff and making art, so that works for them. Yeah, it's also that the Boggins are associated with bees. So, you behold, the the girl goes over to them, thinking he's going to get a nice honey pot dinner. Oh, hello, Mister Girl. Would you like a hoogie? Oh, boy, I was just looking for a little pot of honey. I will not deliver the honey, but I have a honey cookie if you would like a honey cookie. My name is Annie. Oh, I make cookies. Oh, oh that'll be most delightful. <laughs> 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 you, you, you gotta talk like you have a cold if you're doing way the two. <laughs> oh, yes. He, he, he's got <laughs> such a breathy voice. <laughs> Tell me, um, what is today? <laughs> I See, um, cigarettes. Sp- speaking of mummies, um, even though the mummies from Mummy: The Resurrection aren't exactly like this, uh, honey mummies. Would you like to talk about the millified man? I beg your fucking pardon. The what? The, there's um the millified man, which is a mummy that is preserved in honey. What culture I'm, did I, that? I know one I'm of not them sh- did. Was it the not Incas? Shitting you. Like, here's your Wikipedia link for it. That's honestly kind of fucking scary looking. Yeah, yeah this. Yeah, so imagine this. It's um, they're also used as Chinese medicine. So people would harvest these mummies and eat them for medicine. Oh my god! It's, there, so there's a legit mummy shortage because a bunch of kings and queens want to eat these mummies. That's and this would inc- crazy. And this would include the girl who would just walk over, push open the crypt, and then just eat the mummy. That's kind of funny. <laughs> like, hmm. but, but in terms of Mummy the Resurrection, the, the, given that a lot of mummy factions want to reclaim the world from the legacy of Set and all the other ills of the world, I can see them get along with them. Yeah, they, the, um, they've been around. They've been there for thousands of years. They probably got some good stories. And, uh, Hunter the Reckoning. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. Get, uh, the the uh, girl have been replaced by Capital G God. They're not going to listen to what you have to say. No. I, I would not... think that it'd be like kind of a. I feel like it'd be just like. That'd be a really poignant plot point, though. Where it's like a girl decides to sack up and wake up from hibernation, like after Agaro has gotten done just like fucking up a a group of hunters, and they're like retreating, licking their wounds, scared out of their minds. Friendly girl approaches, they're all like on edge, heals the one that's about to die, and then just fucks off. And they're like, okay, what the fuck just happened? (laughs) <laughs> that fucking red talon was kicking our shit in, so we ran off, and then this bear wanders over, and now I'm not dying anymore. You, you can also have the, a grim dark moment where, similar to Times of Judgment with Demon the Fallen, where the girl began to consider whether or not they're needed anymore, and whether or not they've slept too long, and now that God needs to get involved and make hunters, whether or not they've failed at their job, and now they live in a world that no longer accommodates for them. The same thing with the salubri as well, which I don't think we talked about the salubri at all. But like, what do you think? I like, yeah, not the, gr- not the salubri. Uh... That one's an odd one because like there aren't a lot of salubri, but on the very, very rare chance that the 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 healers of the Farah breeds meets the mm-hmm. healer of the vampires, and both 
hate each other, but both love stories and both really respect, you know, a deep, intricate the- theological story. That'd be like, that'd, hmm, that's an odd with, one. With the, with, the, with the Watchers, I can see that happening. Maybe. Uh, with the, um, maybe. But with the Warrior cast, I think the two would just leave each other alone. Yeah, that that sounds about right. Yeah, like stay in our stay in our different lanes. But no, if, um, if they had a watcher, then they would talk for hours. And now, now you've got me thinking about the Cappadocians, where once again you've got the exact damn same power, but it's sourced from two different sources. Well, but the Cappadocians talk different... the ears off an elephant. The Cappadocians don't sh- ever shut up about death. Well, it's also so that the, the Cappadocians <laughs> are using it selfishly, and the girl wouldn't abide that. It's the Cappadocians want to raise an army of the dead, and well, the Giovanni want to do that, but the Cappadocians have their own reasons for that. It's because they believe that they're God's chosen crypt keepers, and that when a body dies, it's free real estate to rise for God's eternal That's army. Um, that army's not so eternal because you eventually lose it to Augustus Giovanni. <laughs> yeah, it didn't really work out for them now, did it? But, yeah, I could see if you're doing Dark Ages... The girl would have a lot of issues with the Cappadocians, but if you were to talk to a neonate, you could begin to figure out, well, why were you embraced, and what are the Cappadocians really trying to do? Yeah, that'd be that'd be a quick way to get a target on your back, and for that neonate to just get fucking killed. And next up, Demon of Fallen. Yay! Hmm. There, there is... I can see them talking to every faction except for the Ravengers. Yeah. I mean, the yeah, demon's given, probably the best stories out of all of them. Yeah, given, given that the Ravengers just want to kill, but like the Reconcilers, you have a demon that wants to redeem himself and become an angel again. All right, that sounds awesome. Let's follow this guy around. You have the Cryptics who are trying to solve the puzzle as to why did God um, cause the fall to happen? Because they, they say it's God's fault that they're in hell. And you want to see, well, where's that story going to go? You have the, um, the Faustians who can sweet talk you into buying anything. So, behold, there's your plot hook right there. But the biggest one I see out of all of them, the Luciferians. It's because they're doing the same thing. They're trying to teach and guide humanity. But one is led by Gaia. The other one is led by the big daddy, Lucifer. And the thing is, um, Grim, have you met Lucifer lately? Can't say that I have. So, funny enough, in even the Fallen, he's actually a pretty small guy if you talk to him. And like how small? Like I two? know what you're saying, Kyle. You've read the scripture. You've been told that when the enemy will appear, he's going to appear seductive. He's going to try to lure you in. But every demon in Demon of Fallen has a torment meter, which describes how insane are they from all their years in hell being tortured. But, um, let me pull up a picture of what he looks like. So, pretty much looks like, um, like this, Kyle. That is not what I was expecting. That's what he looks like. It's because he's got a torment rating of 1. He's almost an angel. So he's quite literally, he's just like, he, he's just apathetic to the torment of hell at this point. It's that he's, he's come to peace with it and he swears up, down, left, and right. He can do a better job at leading the world than God can. And that is why but he won't ish- make it back up. And it's that hubris is why he's always going to stay there. But the dude legit believes that he can help humanity. And the people that he has directly talked to in his eternity on Earth, he has actually improved their lives. Oh, so, man. like, what Cain wishes he was doing, Lucifer is actually accomplishing. And yeah, Cain should have the thing to is, guy. when Lucifer talks to a, to a demon, it goes horribly, horribly wrong because we got Asmodeus, Bell, um, and Belial from him doing that. Along, along with Dagon, who's still out there. So, very good at talking to humans. Terrible when it comes to talking to his own kind. That's because he doesn't want to be his own kind. He doesn't want to. He wants to be an angel. He wants to. He wants God's position. 
So I can see him and the girl talking because they both swear that they know what needs to be done for humanity while at the same time not really understanding humanity. I mean, one is the, the diaper-wearing bear babies who just do everything that Mommy Gaia tells them to do. And the other guy is the guy who's so arrogant he believes he's above God. So, imagine the conversations and the plot lines that could come from these two meeting. Honestly, they'd be fucking innumerable. Fair. I'm, I'm kind of like sort of like wondering when I'm going to run that Changing Breeds game and whether or not I could bring Demon to Fall into more of my games. Uh, dibs on the Corax. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And I'm sorry, I like the, the Corax. They're based. <laughs> dibs on the Naga. Snake people. Now, the last thing, uh, I want to show off some pictures before we end it for tonight. Now, in the back of the book, there are these little character portraits where, like, you have the pre-made characters. We made a whole like, tiny video about them uh, over Christmas break. So, uh, here's an idea of how to play your girl. You ready for this, guys? There, yes. There's four pictures. Bring it. Right, first, first of all, the guy who stacks rocks on top of each other. Of course. <laughs> Primitive <laughs> artist. He's got a single got the... rope for an overall. <laughs> That's all That's you need. A new pair of pants, dude. Uh, hey, next up, the kindergarten teacher. That's actually kind of adorable. They, they, they teach the young. They'll look. remember. The, they'll learn lessons. They'll shape their future. Ryan. He's gonna get a gold star today. Let's see. Um, the veterinarian. <laughs> Let's see, I, I think the message is pretty clear with the girl, right? Yep, uh, they're the peacekeepers of the world, or so see. they like to think. See, uh, you got these pictures on the screen, Scarl? Yes. And lastly, the demon from hell. Ah, yes, a classic. <laughs> yeah, it looks about right. <laughs> a bit of a shift there, isn't it? <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's scary looking. <laughs> He managed this to be more intimidating than the than the Gethfinner's picture we had before. Yeah, surprisingly. No, but to be fair, I think picture, good. I think bears are a lot more terrifying than wolves. Yeah, in general. Yeah, I don't know, give, they're, give both, that, they're both kind of friend shaped though, like, unless they look like that. Well, it's more like the noises they make because like the bears got like the the deeper voice. Yeah, it's that. <laughs> and you're saying that the Naga aren't friend shaped. Uh, oh. uh, that is a danger. A, that is a poisonous danger noodle. I don't want it's that. A cu it's a cuddly snake. You get to snuggle up with the snake. But it's only poisonous if you eat it. <laughs> yeah, it's, I don't. I don't uh, think that's how that works, big man. You, you, I'm gonna keep you gotta, it. Buck. You gotta remember to remove the fangs before you cook it. Yes, it reminds me uh, in um, my Storm King's Thunder game. When we were retaking the um, the Summoner Hill Spire from the cultists that had taken it over, um, one of them was riding a wyvern, and the corpse was still there on the battlefield after we defeated them. So, but we know that I knew that wyverns were poisonous, and I was trying to figure out if you could actually eat wyvern meat. So I nat one the, a survival check. <laughs> I cut open the wyvern meat, and I'm trying to figure out how to get the poison out of it. Our barbarian has a bottle of whiskey on him, so I asked him to get the bottle of whiskey, thinking that it would cure the toxin from the meat, and it set off like a poison smoke grenade in the room. Wow. <laughs> we all know. We no ran out of there accent. just like coughing yes. and hacking. We took like a D4 <laughs> poison damage, and, our, and everybody else in the party is like, what the fuck were you thinking? And we're both like, it sounded like such a good idea at the time. <laughs> and then the process, you made Lutavisk. Yes, and I'm like, okay, we need to keep that in mind. Uh, 40 proof alcohol plus wyvern meat equals equals gasp grenade. Um, I, was, I imagine like later on in the story, Colt's going to re regale the story to his wife, and she's going to ask the same question, to which he'd respond... Well, it's one of those things you don't know unless you try. I mean, wyverns are like the puffer fish of the land beasts. <laughs> uh, 
The fugu was delicious. There wasn't enough for everybody. <laughs> but, but thank you, Graham, for eating 24 pieces of it before anyone else could reach the plate. You're welcome. It's Graham for. eating all the cookies before the AIDS bake sale. <laughs> you know it. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even going to do it in human form. He's just going to walk in as a wolf. Yep, or he just like drags puppy. the whole like. He it drags, brings the table out the with him. Table with him, the tablecloth <laughs> in his and, teeth. And now we have to sell uh, Tyler and Elmira Rosanel beads instead. No, no, shut the fuck up! They can keep that. Shut the fuck up! You don't, you don't <laughs> talk about that. You don't fucking talk about that. <laughs> And that's that's the girl. That's Good. the girl. <laughs> All right, do, do either of you have any ideas to regards to the girl? Uh, nope. They need to sack the fuck up. Yes, that's the moral of the story. Okay. Get a pair of balls. Yes. All right. Good night, everybody. Have a good night, guys.